comes the challenger! Here 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 comes the challenger! Hello. Here comes the challenger! All right, we're live. I think I've fixed the volume settings on the follower alerts. And uh, let's just go ahead and finish setting everything up. Let's turn on that game volume. There we go. What's up, everybody? My name is Mount Lover. I'm here with User Unknown. How's it going? Hello, pretty good. All right, let's get this show on the road. Let me go ahead and uh, refresh this. And this time, all right, let's uh, process the check-in results. All right, looks like we've got a pretty decently sized bracket. As usual, pretty much like um, as long as the brackets exceed 16 people, if you get one win, you get one point. <laughs> No consolation prize for people who go 0 2, unfortunately, though. Alright, let's fix these headers. Grand finals. Winners finals. Top 8 winners. Top 8 
top eight losers. Semi. Finally. Alright, so the way this always goes, as usual, is I'm going to. Go Here ahead comes the and... challenger! Wow, that's still loud. I'm gonna go ahead and. start the tournament and then everybody in round one is free to go ahead and start their matches find out your uh find your opponent and go ahead and uh take care of your match except for one lucky couple of people who i'm going to go ahead and put on stream just arbitrarily also user let me go ahead and send you an invite to the lobby yep it's just user <clears throat> unknown right yeah i do have to send an invite to uh super Zay super saiyan 3 shin ken I'm not gonna lie, I actually am. <laughs> you are actually on, on Super Saiyan monitor. 3 Shin Ken on your second monitor? No, no, no. no. Okay. no, no. Uh, I have, I'm watching Dream Back right now. Um, oh, okay, okay. So gotcha. I'll, 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 I'm watching. Uh, K Brad just beat Nemo. Goddamn. Yeah, it sucks when these things like overlap with uh, yeah, the ranking but, um, events. Matter of fact, I had to push up um, the next tournament uh, by a week. Because of the fact that uh, if I didn't, then it'd be overlapping with SoCal Regionals, and I can't have that happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that definitely can happen. SCR is going to be hype. Mm -hmm. All right, so everybody is free to start their match as soon as I hit this button, except for the following two, who I'm going to make that be... Uh... Oh, it's tempting to just put uh, put Karens on, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put Potato Man versus <laughs> Jordan.exe on stream for the first match. So everybody's free to go ahead and start your matches, except for those two. I've clicked the... St oh, actually, hang on. Yeah, no, that's correct. All right. Potato Man versus Jordan.exe. Uh, do you know their characters? I know that Potato plays uh, Geef. I do not know who Jordan.exe plays. Hmm. So speaking of Karen and Birdie, did you see Nakadu's uh, counter pick? <laughs> uh, actually, I didn't. <laughs> Was that? Uh, did he? Wait, uh, yeah. Did that um, happen again he, this uh, this tournament? Yeah, uh, he beat Justin's uh, Karen with his birdie. Now, now every Karen player ever used that as an OS whenever I beat them. Because when you play a character like Karen, matchups that are like six four feel unwinnable because you're not used to. Lose. Birdie is definitely well. I he used to definitely be um, Karen's worst matchup. Although, now with Abigail and Monat in the picture, that might not be true anymore. Those Abigail and Monat look really difficult for, uh, for Karen. Uh, and I mean, Monat yeah, might not so. be so much. Monat, we're, we're already starting to figure out some anti-Monat tech, but Abigail is looking pretty yeah. pretty rough. Well, both things are that the fact that Karen's, um, Karen isn't anything too overwhelming, and she still has to respect stuff like like armor and for some of both are, are normals. Like, like Abigail's crouch jab and kind of just can test a lot of what she does. Um, same thing with Birdie. Birdie's crouch jab is an absolutely stupidly good normal. It's like top three normals in the game, so you can just kind of abuse that. Jordan dot exe. There we go. But yeah, I just wish um. I can play this game for the most part, it's just there are kind of um, spikes because I have to actually, yeah, even now I'm on a VPN because um, my school blocks sports. It blocks sports, but you can watch uh, you can watch esports though, right? <laughs> yeah, um, it just blocks a lot peer to peer. Uh, Potato Man, yeah, just get me. Uh, I'm not sure why it does that. Um, what's it called? Street Fighter Five is a complete peer to peer. So even when I'm not using a VPN, technically I can play, but I don't find matches. Um, but something like Ficade, I actually just can't use. Oh. All right, let me quickly shout out all these followers. Um, what is this? What do we have? Some of these are kind of old, but uh, shout outs to Afronastics and McCarter418 for pressing start. So all right. We got, we got a big body matchup right now. Um. I know some Geef players who really don't like this, but I like to think it's fairly even. Um, Abigail can't deal with Geef pressure at all. And, I haven't um, seen this at all yet so far. This is going to be fun. Yeah. 
Um, Abigail has trouble dealing with, you know, Vortex, as everyone does. But Geef, um, some of Geef's normals are pretty good at whip punishing. Abigail's normals aren't that fast, so if Geef stays outside of, like, a whip punish range, it's actually pretty solid for Geef. Um, it's actually really funny to bully uh, Abigail players when you're minus one or minus two, because they have one, Abigail has exactly one uh, one normal that can challenge those kinds of situations, which is crouching light kick. And yeah, so a lot of Abigail players just never think to, to use counter confirms off of that button. Oh yeah, good punish bullying. on the Abigail punch. Um, people still are punishing that, even though it's highly negative. SPD dash forward. Okay, EX. Here's here's the. Uh, a lot here's of the characters moves and normals are extremely punishable. The problem is a lot of characters don't have anything Ooh, they can reach, um, or at least nothing that can reach obviously. And it's really hard to tell with Abigail because he's got such a. He just takes up so much screen real estate that like you don't know where his oh, hurt box versus up. body is. Okay, so he he doesn't mask the punch. That technically gives you a game. Okay, somewhere. it's a punish. Yep. It should have been a punish, but that wasn't actually a reversal. I think it still was a punch, though. Oh, that's yeah, just it's, so like minus. it's like minus 12, I think. Yeah. Really Round two. Um, let's, let's, let's see if Jordan can. Oh, okay. Charge standing yeah. heavy punch just annihilates that run. I'm not sure what he canceled it into, well, but it was, it was probably grab it. Yeah, because um, you only can have armor as long as you're actually running. Oh, just go to the super. Uh, that's fine. I'm not sure if I agree with that, but get the damage when you can. Um, God, the damage. And oh, that's gonna work. That, that might hit. That might hit. Yep, yep. That absolutely that, is going to hit. A... That critical art. You cannot jump Big over it. You cannot neutral jump. But you cannot jump back. You can't run away. You just have to block. Technically, he can dash forward after that and um, get a 50/50. But it looks like he didn't take. He didn't use that. Okay, and sweep. Pop speed trigger. Okay. Oh, and he gets just grabs. Oh, not dead. No quick rise means that yeah, Potato Man's just gonna be able to do whatever he wants in that wake up situation. Um, and that's I wanna be game see one there, Potato Man. I wanna see Jordan contesting more, um, with more normals. I wanna I wanna see him contesting with um just jabs, just jabbing Geef as he tries to walk forward, um, trying to catch stuff with Stan Fear sometimes, and um in general just play, be, be be more active. He seems pretty scared of Potato Man right now. Um But we'll get we can, we'll see. Um it's about adaptation. Yeah, as with new characters, Jordan obviously still feeling out his tools. Uh, it makes me wonder if Abigail's his okay. first character if he moved to Abigail. It's, Ooh, it's good overhead. Oh, overhead? That overhead oh, has so much run. range. And just runs Abigail punch. I'm not sure what he was trying to do there. Good answer. Good. 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 There. Oh no, he's low profiled with the uh, thin heavy kick. Good block on the sweep and a punish. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've actually, a geek player is telling me that, ooh, good jump back like it. That's actually, um, Abigail can actually instant overhead with that, um, with Fuzzy Guard, but anyways. Uh, a geek player was that was telling me that, um, it's actually, EXS Speed is, doesn't have, add any more damage, actually, so it's not good to use most of this, but, um, also, for, for those of you who have trouble dealing with Geek Speed Trigger, uh, if he just does Raw Vortex, it's actually punishable. It's either minus four or minus six. Okay, that was a pretty yes, sick uh, whip punish yeah. there on that run. If you would have come down with a normal, it would have just clinked the armor. So doing an empty um, neutral jump into the command grab was yeah. an excellent option there. The safest thing to do against run is kind of weird. Like, you, sometimes if you jump back, you just get hit by the kick, uh, by the big overhead kick thing. Mm -hmm. But if you try to contest it, you, you carry it. It's weird. Some people oh, have uh, what those multi-hitting normals that they can use to just chip yeah. out all that all that armor. Um, but what I like to do is just wait until he's within grab range and then go for the neutral jump. You'll usually beat all the options that, that way. I think I think that was an AEX SPD he attempted um, after the neutral grab. A lot of geese will do that. They'll go for a regular grab and then if you jump back, they'll um, they'll do air grab. But it's super big damage. Dash forward, dash forward. Come on, do it. Dash forward. Actually, no, he's in the corner, so he has that piece. Overhead yeah, just hammer. Um, I don't think he, he hasn't really used Stan Strong at all Ooh. this match. Big punish opportunity off that sweep. He goes for a jab into V trigger. Goes for the reset. Nice. And then be dash another forward. meaty situation. I don't want to see an SPD. Okay, yeah. SPD would have been risky. And then jump back like take instant overhead. Yeah, it's interesting. Throw. That's a good option. J this is, this is, let's, let's see how patient, um, Potato Man actually is. And he plays in so he has to be. Oh, no, oh, he jumps forward. The answer is no. That's, that was interesting, but... Stand strong is actually a pretty damn good button. It's the only it's the only normal yeah. in the game that's plus five on block. <laughs> uh, plus six counters too. So it hits on the second active. Frame. Oh, there goes that running bear grab um, reset. The potato man loves to do it. It did not work. How does he gonna take that damage? Ooh, just whips command grab. I'm not sure who was going for. Oh, jab ants here. 
We're seeing a bit of an adaptation from Jordan. He's, he's being he's being more active in how he's contesting him. You know what I can already tell? I can already tell the Potato Man's having a very hard time gauging when he's within range of Abigail. Because you can see him just yeah. waving those headbutts, and it looks like he's connecting, but it's just overlapping with Abigail's uh his body there. Hip -box, animation. Yeah. Oh, gets gets gimmick. But let's see if he let's see if the super. Oh, that doesn't Wake up critical arc, oh, please block super. and please punish. Punish this whatever you want. He goes for headbutt into yeah. critical arc. Well, he Not actually could have killed. Well, this might kill anyways. Oh yeah, it does. All right. Yeah. Um, but, but actually, Geef gets a full-on jump headbutt punish because it's like a two-second. Yeah, animation. absolutely. It's oh, it's yeah. just ridiculous uh, amounts of uh, recovery frames from that critical art when you block it. So you can literally just do whatever you want. Uh, but uh, a better showing in the second round. I still want. I still have like to see um, a little more activeness from Jordan. But he definitely um, pressed some good buttons. Had to, he had some good decisions. Um, he just looked looked a little unsure what to do on offense in particular. Oops, um, got the wrong bracket here. Let's go ahead and fix that real quick. Boop. Because Abigail's offense can be scary if you are aware what to do in those situations. Like he, Abigail can end up plus three in your face sometimes, depending on what he's doing. Damn, there we go. All right. So uh, let's see. It looks like we have got a few matches to wait on still. Potato Man takes a 2-0 over Jordan. Exe. It looks like he's still gotta iron out some kinks and uh, figure out some more tools for uh, yeah. for Abigail, which I don't blame him for for not having yeah. all of Abigail's tech. <laughs> you know, nobody has <laughs> all of Abigail's tech unlock yet. And Abigail's a little bit uh, deceivingly complex. It's it's hard he to. Is. I, I was uh, I was running some sets with an Abigail player uh, earlier. Um, and it was very hard for him to decide, like, when to extend your pressure with stuff like runs and a grab, and when to just back off and be content to play a neutral yeah. game. Because he did, he um, plays the neutral game very, very well. Um, especially lame, with, lame Abigail actually can be very scary. Oh yeah, absolutely. You've got, you've got literally full range, full screen sweep, three quarter screen uh, crouching medium punch, you got a half screen jab, it's just, your, your normals are ridiculously good at keeping opponents out all game, and so that's a very valid way to play. Still waiting on a few um, games. Looks like Let's Go Crazy takes it over think, Dark Otter 2-0. I think one run will be more phased out the more people play Abigail. I think, personally. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay. It's, uh, it's think, the equivalent um, of Laura's uh, V-Scale Dash, you know? Like, it is yeah. it is 100% a gimmick, but it's a gimmick that works, you know? It's a gimmick yeah. that depends on people's inability to react in time. Exactly. Um, it puts you in that, in that situation like, oh, God, what is he doing? Um... The problem with Abigail, the problem with the runners to a certain extent, is that um, if, you, if people just don't do anything, <laughs> um, it's kind of like if the run kind of is better when it still fear into someone. When someone knows the options and gets hit for it, when people just don't know what to do, they might do stuff that inadvertently works against it, which can kind of be a double edged sword. Um, it's Abigail's Yomi is interesting because it kind of depends on. Uh, Sometimes what your play, the opponent actually knowing what Abigail can do, but you have to play around that. Like you, you're not gonna land the run the parry on someone who's just like scared and doesn't know what to do, but but it's a it's a viable option against someone who like tries to contest you or something like that. Yeah, the thing about run is that it's it's yes it's a gimmick, but it's a gimmick that has so much flexibility and so much variability with it that um it's yeah I like to compare it to I want to compare it to something like uh, flying Barcelona attack, in that like. Yes, it is technically a gimmick, but it, there's so much versatility there that if somebody mm -hmm. figures out an answer to your flying Barcelona attack, you can easily just change your angle of approach to beat that particular option. And it's the same same thing with run. If somebody's yep. um, breaking through the armor, he can get up to three hits of armor depending on the situation. If somebody is um, jumping it, neutral jumping it, then you can do stuff like instant run into um, into Abigail the punch, kick. and that'll that'll or the kick punch. or the punch. Both of them will will stuff somebody on the way up. And uh, so there's just, you just have to know all of your options. And sometimes, um, like most of the time I tell people like, you know, if something doesn't work, you know, stop doing it. But with Abigail, you know, maybe it's worth exploring your options there. If something isn't working, figure out why Definitely. it isn't working. And if you have any options to counter that in particular. Uh, it's kind of, kind of like Forte in that regard, although Forte's run was kind of just a pivotal part of the game, mm -hmm. more so than Abigail, I think. Um, I think Abigail has the tools to be, to be solid outside of his gimmicks whereas some characters that are in the previous games previous series that's one thing one thing about street fighter 5 is that the tools are kind of streamlined to the point where every character can play fairly solid um there's no character that that 100 percent so with me there it, okay it, it it brings more players to different characters 
All right, last game that we're waiting on before we can continue to our next round is Octag uh, Octacon versus Standing Fierce. Let's go ahead and check on them, see how they're doing. Octacon? Like, like, Octacon. <laughs> like if Otacon had eight heads, I guess. <laughs> Oh, it's Octacon 1. I shouted out the wrong person. I should probably follow <laughs> this stream while I'm at it. I'm not sure if I have or not. But um, I really like what what this kind of gives an opportunity for players to who aren't probably super familiar with offline or tournament scenes to kind of um, get that kind of experience where you're, you are playing for something. Um, be it bragging rights, be it, you know, you're playing in that setting, and that kind of can help you decide on whether or not you know you want to pursue really getting competitive and further. Some people just don't play in the setting. Some people just want to grind out casuals, and that's perfectly fine. Um, don't feel like, especially if you're a beginning, that you have to go to tournaments and you have to like be good. Um, you can go to tournaments and just watch, um, or you can go to tournaments and just play casuals. It's just, just, offline scenes are great, even if you're not super competitive player. Yeah, playing casuals in tournaments is actually a really good way to get um, get yeah. actually a lot more uh, hands-on experience without actually having to, to participate in the tournaments. You can get a lot <laughs> of sets in with a lot of good players really quickly. Because those players uh, that are in the tournament, they want to warm up, right? But they don't want to warm yeah. up against their opponents, right? So <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't want to reveal all your gimmicks. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, no response on these guys. I'm going to assume that they're currently playing. Hesitant to go on without them. Uh, well, yeah, I'm sure we can just get a round two match, and they'll, and they'll they'll finish up hopefully. Hopefully, let's see who do I want my next match to be on stream. Let's look at what we've got here. Now oh, it's gonna be a good match. Yeah, the next one I'll have on stream is probably going to be Arrow versus I Apollo. You know their characters. Arrow play X Arrow plays everybody. Um, he, I, I don't even remember everybody off the top of my head. But uh, last tournament he got two grand finals with uh, with Chun Li, and then ended up switching to his trademark Rashid in order to actually take it. So he made out my own heart, especially in a game like this. Um, just exploring all different characters is definitely something that's fun and also I think makes you a better player overall. Okay, Standing Fierce somehow manages to win his set 3-0. to zero. I guess they played an uh, extra set and then Standing Fierce also okay. won it. So that, that's a uh, good, good on you, Standing Fierce, I guess. Uh, let's go ahead and send an invite to x and I, Apollo. And... Tell everybody in winner's round two and loser's round one that they are ready to go. <laughs> More uh could be interesting. Alright. Yep, Iapolis is a uh, Laura player and X Hero. It looks like he might be going with Chun again this time around. Um, I do think his last uh, tournament, at least, his Rashid was uh, looked looked a lot stronger, and he has a lot more experience with Rashid. But uh, I, I do know that he's been grinding his head against Chun lately, trying to make that work. Go ahead and hop to the back of the queue, and let's get this next match over with. Shoutouts to Honky Magoo for the follow. So uh, I think we all set. Um, I'll, I was I was I was wondering if they were gonna skip me, but I was gonna be back myself. Yeah, just hop to the back. Never mind. Right, I said that they started skipping. Oh, we 
it should be all set. A uh, Chun versus Laura. Chun actually can do fairly well against Laura. Um, Laura's defense isn't that great, and um, Chun's kind of uh, neutral pressure can be somewhat overwhelming. But of course, Laura gets Laura stuff. Um, and it does look like Chun is in fact going to stick with that Chun. Yep. All right. Got that yellow swimsuit, Laura. So yeah, I from what I've seen from uh, from X with Chun, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. He's, he's, we're going to see a lot of standing heavy punch. We're going to see a lot of like trying to keep Laura out. But I still think that uh, at the same time, Apollos can uh, pull out the huge momentum swings as soon as he does yeah. manage to get in. Definitely. Um, and Chun, not the best defense out. Yeah, is it, like there right is. now he's just saying like that fireball game. Oh, good ants here. Very nice. Anti-air. That elbow was very, very good. <laughs> For the Ranger very colors. Very scary situation there when you get jumped in on by Laura. And then the uh, the jumping leg kick and the standing leg kick. You never know when that command grab is going to hit you. Yeah. X Arrow keeping what... his calm right now, but he's being worked in the corner. One thing that like like every player now, like every, even the top players have trouble dealing with is Laura's standing medium kick. The button just seems very impressive. Yeah, standing medium kick is just inexplicably good. It's weird how good that button is. The yeah. hit stop on it is oh. very low, so it's difficult to react in time oh, to actually trigger? challenge it. It doesn't and cancel, then, it just does stand fierce. He doesn't cancel that, it. If you do stuff like uh, feature or cancel it, you can actually space the zero. Mm -hmm. So, okay, there it is. Okay, arrow is for arrow. He's hitting okay. he gonna... heavy punch, feature or cancel. Interesting option there. I was wondering if he was going to super trip out. Well, I don't know, runs the bar. Oh, nice overhead. <laughs> Standing medium pick is like a mind game. <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> It's 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 a difficult. Yeah, it's a one-player um, mind game. It's a Rubik's cube, is what it is. <laughs> okay, stand like a anti-air, still solid. Um, stand like a meeting, not so solid. <laughs> yeah, um, I I still like to see players who are used to jab anti-air go for heavier ones, dissuade jumping more. Because if, like, like if I'm if I'm Apollos, one jump in makes all those jab anti-airs worth it. So one thing I can immediately see that's uh, in indicative of a little bit of unfamiliarity with X Arrow with this character. Uh, with Chun, that is, because he's Ooh, playing with other characters, is he doesn't quite have his meaty setups off of that uh, spinning bird kick yeah. down. You saw that he allowed eyeballs to wake up Jab, which normally should be free, yep. a free combo for you. Yeah, I, I am still allow the meaty stand strong that a lot of Chun's would do. Oop, wake up stand strong, like kick kill. Confirmed, though. Oh, he saved the bar. Let's see, in one situation. Oh, there Stays it is. on the ground and no, then wake the up, wakes up with the EX bird kick. Drops the punish though. That was game. Oh, and yeah. See, see what I was talking about. It's not. It's definitely not as impressive as it was. Um, yeah, you can't lose now. All those uh, like there are certain normals in the game that are really good. Jumping normals that are good at stuffing those light uh, anti airs and yeah. something like it used to just beat him clean. But now, now Ooh, you do have a hurt gets box. The, he gets the midi. The midi. That's a midi only combo. I love that Very challenge. Nice. Manages to challenge that uh, that ex sunset wheel in that uh, that fake midi situation. Yeah. He's just, he's just picking some very good button button choices right now. Good confirm for him off that crush counter. Look up crush light kick. Jay's is three out of four. Do the reversal. Oh, that's the overhead. Okay. Confirms in the critical art. This is gonna do with laughably little damage. Watch this. Watch his life bar. <laughs> oh man, that was all. That was all the resources. Oh no, drops it. That's a punish. Yep, um, eyeballs just yeah. takes it back with two buttons. Oh, well, he actually had a good confirm uh, if we didn't drop it, but, um... Uh, X Arrow was, was looking fairly strong. We'll see if he, um, we'll see if he sticks with Chun. Um, or Rashid versus Laura, I feel like Rashid is a little, does a little bit better in that matchup. Um, just because he can kind of rush her down more. I don't know that regardless of how the, the matchup actually plays out, I know that X Arrow definitely would be stronger with his Rashid. That's just his bread and butter character. But I think he wants to prove to himself that he can actually win this tournament with Chun Li. Yeah, but that, that's one of the parts of um, these tournaments is just kind of filling yourself out and filling out certain characters you want to attempt in a, in a more serious setting. Oop, gets hit by the fireball. Oops. Good oh, jump over the, the jump EX here. token. Yeah. That wasn't actually a punish. Uh, next year I was walking into it. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's going to that, that's gonna be game because Laura's post. Yeah, this should be absolutely make it. Bam. Laura is probably, it's probably the highest stun damage in the game after she has a stun. Um, it's kind of just ridiculous. How minus is Chun's stomp? How is Chun's stomp? So, as an star, I feel like that's a good option. Kind of messes up Laura's anti air options. Not sure where you would use stomp, really. Is oh, the, oh, the air stomp? Um, it's actually kind of a gimmick pressure option that you can use that to 
taller ones like Bernie and Abigail are probably dealing with it. Yeah, um, instant instant stop really... definitely still a thing, but uh, it's it one of those tools that you can only use in very specific situations. Yeah. It's a nightmare to execute. Yeah, it's just in, in instant legs not being as good anymore. No, they are kind of. Ooh, excellent nice wake up, back heavy punch, stuffs that EX Sunset wheel again. Not gonna let Laura go for that fake pressure. Good yep. throw on okay. the re reversal. Look at this Ooh, corner pressure going on. Stuffs Ooh, the jump spears. in, and apparently that knocks down and didn't beat trick, I didn't even know that. Super... Ooh, two opportunities to kill drop, but the EX spinning yeah, he... is gonna go ahead and pull up the Okay, just, just do it. Wow, make that risk. Um, That was good, actually, because you saw that Apollos had the momentum. I don't think Apollo. In that situation, I really don't think Apollos would ever. Um... Whatever, just not just block. So that was that was a really smart decision. Jump fierce. Oh, same side. That was a good block. The exit go goes in with an overhead. Gets hit standing, interestingly Those enough. Two. Ooh, stand fierce, stand fierce. X arrow's looking a lot more comfortable in this end of yeah, so just kind of using so that sure. that range advantage to his advantage. Just oh, okay, interesting option there. Using the EX Sunset to pass through Kakokin, but still whiffs. I have had some great reads on those fireballs. Yep, it's crossed up. Goes to the crush Stay counter reset. Block. Doesn't quite work uh, out for him. Stand fierce is actually minus. It's actually punishable for Chung. It's minus three. Mm -hmm. Um, or stand fierce rather. So I'm not. Sure. That might be a little bit of unfamiliarity. Oh, they uh, doesn't get to punish that. There it is. That's game. And that's game. Yeah, absolutely. Gonna have no problem closing that out. Doesn't even need to go for the heavy with bolt charge afterwards. XL looked more better in that second game, looked more confident, but um, it's just what it is. Is it's it's just well, unfamiliarity yeah. with uh with, mm -hmm. with Chun's options. Some some of Laura's options, yeah, and some of Chun's too. Yeah, like we saw and, him uh, going for uh, hitting a lot of those uh those crouching leg kick confirms, but uh, not quite doing uh, optimal punishes and not uh. Yeah, not quite doing ultimate punishes in every situation. Just a lot of like small things that he could iron out there. Yep. That uh, X Arrow could iron out there to uh, to get some more damage on the board. And damage is absolutely something you can't be passing up as Chun. You don't yeah, get a lot well, of it. Especially in this game where every every little bit of damage counts because you know that little bit of extra that little bit of extra life Laura survives with. You know, all of a sudden that's her comeback factor. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Laura is one of those characters that has no problems absolutely uh, making up for lost damage. Chun, on the other hand, you have to take every last opportunity your opponent throws you away. All right, still waiting on Euthanasia versus Cookie Cannon, AKA Sleeping James. Still waiting on Yoshi versus Arlie and DB Rockstar versus Standing Fierce. Otherwise it looks like uh, Let's Go Crazy takes it over Oscar Mike 2-1. That was probably a good match. Uh, Infinite takes it over Jigs. Uh, Perf takes it over more Crabs. Uh, we just saw the Ayapalos match and Potato Man takes it over Twisty. 2-0. Potato Man going a long way with his geef. Pretty much, um, <laughs> if uh, if Sleeping James manages to take it over, ta manages to take it over Euthanasia, he's gonna have his own work cut out for him because that's gonna be that's gonna be the Geef Sim matchup. And so, at uh, I kind of want to put yeah. that one on stream, but I kind of also don't want to put that one on stream because uh, <laughs> um, it's 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 either gonna be exciting or really depressing. <laughs> it happened last tournament as well, and uh, that that's actually uh, that's how Potato Man managed to to get knocked out of the tournament with only one point. <laughs> um, and so I, I, I do want to give him that opportunity to get that yeah. run back on stream. Oh no, Euthanasia actually takes it over Cookie Cannon 2 to 1. So Potato Man gets spared having to deal with that awful matchup for now. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite as bad as it was previous games. Um I think Geef has certain options against it, but um it's kind of evened out because there's a way to Geef play it, can... but it's just frustrating as hell for Geef is what it is. <laughs> while Geef can deal with the zoning more. Yo. Um so it kind of evens out. It's interesting. What was that you cut out I mean, for a bit? Oh, uh, I was saying, well, while Geef, Geef, well, the zoning isn't as scary as it was in previous games, um, Sim has the ability to rush down a lot more now. So Geef actually has to deal with a rush down Sim, which you never thought, I never thought I'd say in any situation. <laughs> um, but, See, now I, I actually mean, think that uh, the correct way to play Sim in that matchup is actually to not rush down, just to play lame. Mm -hmm. Uh, completely keep uh, Zangief on the out and out with uh, with like normals like that standing medium kick, uh, standing jab, and crouching. What is it? Uh, heavy punch for uh, to just keep him from being able to jump in. And then all of a sudden you leave Zangief with two options, and one of which is either to play the game at full screen and try to whip punish those um, those standing medium kicks, and the other option is to just turn all of your health gray and try to slowly work your way in with stuff like uh, V skills and uh, you know armor. Stuff like uh, running bear grabs, just like take yeah. risks to try and get in, <laughs> and that's that's a really uphill battle for Geef. Yep. Because Justin, um, or not Justin, sorry, I was watching Dreamhack. Um, 
Uh, gray gray life is um, also a resource. Um, just life in general is a resource. Mm -hmm. um, don't be afraid to kind of walk forward, take some bad trades, take some take some risks. Uh, especially characters like Geef or Abigail or Birdie, characters that can use that life, that extra life to kind of just war, you know, get in and um, get that one chance. All right, it looks like winners round three and losers round two are free to start, except for Potato Man and Euthanasia. You guys are going to be on stream. Man, whose theme is playing right now? I've got like the random uh, Street Fighter music on for uh, for the menus, but I don't recognize this current song at all. It's probably one of Minot's songs then. Oh yeah, this is definitely Minot's song because it sounds like it's got like a little Egyptian vibes to it. Yeah. It's a really good song. I actually like this one. The OST, Street Fighter V's OSP has been, has been pretty um has been pretty strong. It's it's certain things like the like jury sleeps <laughs> they tried something different and it didn't really work out, but um overall I like most of the songs. What the heck is this? Hang on. Cookie Cannon loses to Euthanasia and then five seconds later immediately goes 2-0 over Octacon. Did Octacon drop out? What happened here? You know what? I'll worry about this later. <laughs> if uh... <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna undo that uh, that decision, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let these guys play normally. Can I even revert this? Yeah, I can. I'm gonna reopen that. Let you guys actually play, and then uh, after this match ends, we'll, we'll verify exactly what happened there. <laughs> All right, hop to the back of the queue and let's uh, let's let these guys go. This is gonna be a Geef versus Vega. This is gonna be an interesting matchup. So um, this is one of those matchups that, depending on the player and depending on the character, they'll say either or. Um, I've heard Vega players bemoan that their their weak, their weak defensive options kind of get blown up by Geef, and I've heard Geef players bemoan that Vega's kind of oppressive normals and um, keep out tools and kind of mess with Geef. So that's how you know matchups even when both players hate it. <laughs> I'm absolutely interested to know whether he's going to play the majority of this matchup with the claw on or off. Uh, um, I, I I like Claw on this matchup. Um, I think I just think that certain normals like like stand strong, crouch strong, um, stand fierce, or yeah, more fierce. Yeah, I like. It has def has a lot of issues with that. Um, and yeah, I love the whiff punish and that standing heavy. Yeah, such a good option. A lot of players don't do that because. Oh, here we go. Peter oh, Man's in. One good yeah, jump. Is that light? I think that's light though. Yeah, he's gaining off of it. Oh, oh except for the rise, fact though. that Unitization did not quick rise. Allowing Potato Man to do essentially whatever he wants on that wake up. That yeah. Ford Fierce is interesting. It's really negative, but it, it changes or it puts him so far away where you can't really do anything. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Larry, the only thing you can do to punish it is, uh, is critical art. Literally nothing else reaches as long as it's spaced correctly. Oh, good answer here. He's also nice. got Aurora Edge, which, uh, which works the same way. Or Aurora Spin Edge. It's extremely minus, but it puts you too far away to actually punish oh, yeah. those characters. And that like, that grab's actually a punish, um, because it's minus five, or minus six, minus three. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, if you, if, if, if Geef just does the raw sucking, just, just smash grab. It, it's... Oh, absolutely, yeah. If he does not hold the suction to actually, uh, make it safe on block, you have to, you have to take advantage of that. You have to punish that. Overhead? Nice. Uh, Ethan is just playing a really active neutral, which I like. He's not just trying to be completely lame, he's playing very active and preemptive buttons. Which, um, you kind of just have to, like, not, like, you fuck for it. Vega, you absolutely need a mixture of the two. We see that Crouch Fierce, which got buffed to plus three recently. Um, I actually yeah. would have liked to see what Euthanasia could have done to frame trap out of that. Yeah, he's... Vega's oh. walk speed's also. Oh, big slide. I'm not sure big slide, big not a big punish. Yeah. 
Oh, I love oh. the DX air SPD. Great anti air option. Air to air, rather. That's actually oh, yeah. a wonderful option against Vega in this matchup because if uh, Vega takes the sky with the uh, flying Barcelona attack, you better believe that uh, EX RSPD is going to catch it almost 100% of the time. Oh, yeah, definitely. But uh, good from the super. It's big, pretty big damage. Tenor Man has like one opportunity, and that's that's kind of. He has to find someone to build super and then use V Trigger to kind of get to that point. I so. like what he's doing there, trying to oh, whip punish the. Uh, the whip punish, yeah. Yeah, the forward fierce with the, uh, the, v, kill, but it, uh, the v Trigger doesn't quite work. Doesn't oh no, he jumps into the corner, but there we go. He finally gets the jab into V-Trigger, uh, yeah. but he doesn't have enough charge to, to make a combo ball. Doesn't matter. He EXR Speedy knocks the claw off. Here's the Oki. Gets back thrown. I'd like to say that that's not the optimal like, really option there. That was like, I'm not sure what that was. He, he really just I had to have been a whiff walking. something. I'm not sure what he would have whiffed that would have, he um, would have made him hold forward, but there's no way he intended to get back thrown there. Yeah, I don't think that was intended there. Yeah, and um, he definitely wasn't was... trying to bait anything because there's nothing to bait, so no, I feel like that was course, just a mess yeah. up input. I mean, you know what's interesting, though, is that uh, EX Aurora Spin Edge is throwing it to which is really cool. On frame um, one? So... Yeah. Oh, interesting. I never knew that. Um, yeah, so, cool. if you want to make the hardest of reads... Oh, uh, you know what? That might have been it. That. He might have been trying to chase down a backdash is what he might have been going for. Yeah, a backdash, maybe, but most most keeps just do that double dash. I'm fairly certain the X Oh Age. no, big whiff Lariat in Euthanasia's face. I feel like he could have got a way better punish than that. Yeah. He oh, should no, barely He should try to. to Ooh, big slide. Oh, he should try to be sliding those charge forces. There it is. Standing heavy kick. That's what you want to do with cast back dashes. Dash forward. Oh, oh I like oh, that he's he, going he for the, the EX air speedy, but he didn't have the, the meter to make that EX. That's actually insane. Oh, good reaction. Oh, I Very love smart. it. Punches through that armor. Potato Man, a little bit hasty with that V-Trigger. That's one of those V-Triggers that uh, having a lot... Having... Not wasting the actual gauge is actually very important for, for Geef. So once that gets below a certain amount, your options suddenly oh, get more just limited. Gets jabbed, uh, yeah, jab stubs that Flying Barcelona attack. I'm not having that. My name's Dingy. Alright, make it safe and spends all of his V-Triggers to do so. Oh, oh, wow, empty jump into EX SPD. What's the mix this, this, up going to be this. here? Knocks off the claw. Oh, no. Oh, Autopilots we the, the command grab um, setup. Yeah, we were literally just talking about that. A lot of Ziggy chat, players yeah. will autopilot that. If you stay on the ground, sometimes you can catch them. And uh, Potato Man fell for it. He tries to. That was definitely an player. He tried to kick counter, <laughs> which you never see. Um, I forgot that was a thing. But yeah, um, just. Just very good active buttons in there. Oh, good anti air. Excellent yeah, cross counter anti air into uh, the. Oh, God, what was that? Um, what's that called again? Uh, oh. Barcelona grab? I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I did check, by the way, and I was right. The X, the X, the X um, Aurora is fully throwing its move. So it is an interesting option, but I'm not sure if Asia even needs that at that point. Because he's just doing such a good job of preventing me from getting started. Potato Man sitting on that V-Trigger. He wants to use it. He wants to with punish anything with it. <laughs> yep. He wants to just reaction suction. Oh, that was do. oh, that was the opportunity. Oh, no. He gets hit on the way up. Yeah, the he gets hit walking forward. And uh, uh, Grab is going to take it for euthanasia. He manages to move on over Potato Man. Um, Potato Man just kind of wins. had to be a little more patient. And it kind of had to take control. Had to take, take advantage of... Because there were a couple times where euthanasia did some risky things. The slides, the, the random Barcelonas. But... On, but Potato Man wasn't taking as much advantage of those as he should have. Yeah, Potato Man is fully aware of the fact that he uh, he made a couple of very critical drops, and uh, that's that's pretty much what cost him. Let's face it. If if, if he were to hit uh, that EX Air Speedy, and if he were to finish that uh, that one combo, I don't, I don't remember which one it was, but uh, just just getting those opportunities as a Geef, dropping them, you, you can't afford to make any mistakes because of the fact that uh, that leads into your entire game plan, into your offense. Oh man. But good stuff to Potato Man. I'm sure he'll, he'll work his way back up the loser's bracket, and we'll be seeing some more of him. And good stuff to Euthanasia. Making it into... Are we already... Does that... Uh, yeah, Euthanasia with that win makes it into top eight winners. And then we've got two more rounds before we can continue following our top eight in losers. So let's go ahead. Let's give Euthanasia his points. 2-0 over Potato Man. Still waiting on Infinite versus Perk 13. Uh, Cookie Cannon versus Octacon. Did, did Octacon ever get back? Yoshi's asked me to fix the bracket.
Oh, okay. Let's go ahead and flip that score then. I Balls takes it over Yoshi. Alright. And then, yep, looks like Cookie Cannon takes 2 0 over Octacon. And we're still waiting on X Arrow versus Flux Wildly. Oh, that's probably a good one. That's, that's, uh, that's Chun versus a Boogie. That's probably happening right now. Boogie, man. Um, the character that. Whenever I hear about complaints about characters, the two characters that I think. Well, not. not besides Guile. I don't think people complain about Rashid or Buki enough. Um, both characters are so just kind of dominating in certain situations that people complain about like the characters that like are annoying, like you know Balrog, Karen, um, all that stuff. But Buki and, and Rashid just they can just be so dominant and just shut shut down their options so well. Um, we're, we're seeing people kind of slowly evaluate just how good Rashid is. Um, and I do think he's the best character in the game. Um, I'm hoping we see more of him, just at a higher level, because he's so much fun to watch, though. All right, who would I want my next on-stream match to be? We're going to be looking at losers now. Uh, let's go ahead and put two people who haven't been on the stream yet. Let's go ahead and look at Honky Magoo versus Jigs510 on stream. Everybody else in losers round three is free to go ahead and start your match. Losers round three. Go ahead. Funky Magoo versus Jigs. Alright, set those invites out. If you are in top eight winners, you're going to have to sit tight for just a little bit. Uh, it's going to be a few more rounds before we can get to you. So, yeah, just sit tight. Take a break. you got a couple rounds time to hit the lab or get some refreshments, whatever have you. As always, once we hit top eight, every single match will be streamed. So look forward to that. But for now, we've got two more rounds. we got losers round three. Honky Magoo versus Jigs510. User, can you hop to the back? I still forget that's an option sometimes. Yeah. Um, Ken versus Guile. Um, I do think Ken has a bit of an issue getting in. Oh um, yeah, absolutely. I, <laughs> I, so I've I've got experience uh, with this matchup from both sides, and it's just so uphill for Ken. Ken has no like super easy to use uh, projectile vul and vulnerable tools, right? And yep. so yeah. he has to take a risk to get it. Like there's no other way. Um, but Ken, I think Ken kind of takes takes advantage of momentum and goes for some risky runs. He can kind of put Guile on the back foot. Uh, we just we'll just have to see how comfortable he is. Um, this is another one of those matchups where Gal's another one of those characters that can choose to play the rushdown or the zoning game. Yeah. And in this particular matchup, it's way smarter to play the the, the zoning game. <laughs> oh, Either yeah, one works, round. but no, I, you, you can absolutely make the Ken tear his bananas out if you uh, if you play. Uh... Cool. Oh, okay. Honky, Honky Magoo says sorry. I didn't know the character selectors off. That's fine. I can uh, I can end this. So is this so is this gonna be one zero? No, no, no. no, they just got, they no just he just says uh, I didn't know the character selectors off, and I, it's actually my fault. I forgot to turn it on. CPT rules, man. <laughs> uh, what just happened? Did he, did he leave the match? What the? Oh, you crashed. I I left it. I'm gonna recreate the launch. Okay. Nah, uh, it's just me and, J and Jigs in here. Just uh, go ahead and. Uh, are you? Did I make you the leader? Uh, no. I don't think so. Ah, but anyways, I just left it too as, okay. as well. That certainly is an interesting tag, Honky Magoo. <laughs> it's go time.
Okay, yeah, it's gonna be Yurian versus Ken, and this is the character um, that Donkey Mugun only plays. Okay, um, still same thing. Um, I think Ken is slightly better better opportunity because Yurian's fireball isn't as good as Guile's, um, but Yurian's normals kind of just beat Ken's in a lot of situations. Fight. Oh, starts starts the game with a jump in. Yeah, Jake plays the uh, Jake plays the Ken game pretty well. Oh, short, runs a couple fireballs. But see, I don't mind that, honestly. Runs and jump-ins. This is, this is like, a lot of uh, matchups with Ken. It's very hard to play. I mean, you can absolutely play a very solid game with this Good anti-air. Wow. Very, very small. Like, anti airs that require you to, to let go of back are kind of um, a little more difficult to get yourself to do. Like, uh, it, like um, so, like, having the awareness to just, like, stand strong anti air and, like, be confident Ooh, that's going to hit. Great punishment oh, sweep. Yep. Oh, big EXDP. Doesn't be true, Cancel. He's probably saving it for crotch forward fireball. Oh, that was it! Wow, oh, that anti air head, but yeah, that hit Oh that man, that hit immediately behind his head. Oh, big jumping! Oh, that's a confirm! You're be getting so much more damage off of those. Oh, that was. Ah. You're dropping so many opportunities right now. Well, yeah, absolutely. He's, just he's landing those jump ins and then not going for combos afterwards. He has to learn to hit confirm those jumps 100%. We saw the same problem with Jake's last tournament as well. Manages to close it out with a sweep. But man, is he playing the can game right now. Just relentlessly yeah, jumping um, in. Hockey Magoo can win this just with answers. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's important. That's important that you don't get dissuaded by like a single um, anti air. Ooh, good reversal. At least it's it been barred. No, oh, doesn't get counter the there. Um, that's what he, I like to see. The anti air can play. All he needs that, to definitely. win this matchup. Just keep standing heavy kicking. Yep. Well, big sweep, actually. Ooh, he X. No, he misses the cross oh. counter. He accidentally charges it for a few frames. <laughs> Light, light punch DP generally isn't the best thing to do on one because it's not invincible at all. It's got um, throw invincibility, which makes it a good option against grapplers sometimes. But no, yeah, you're right. It's not a good option. <laughs> um, in general, if you want to go for that three frame wake up, you just go for light touch. Again, I've actually found a lot of high level play, uh, cans prefer light DP over light Tatsu. Um, yeah, they, what they'll do is they'll they'll do light DP wake up. They'll oh, uh, uh, feature sweet. cancel it so that the, on hit you can get a much bigger combo. This is gonna kill. Oh, what? He goes for the wrong ages and then Jigs runs right into it. What is happening? What am I seeing? Oh, got you. Can close okay. that out. Sorry, I lagged out a bit. Fight. 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 Well, yeah. So uh, it froze just as you woke up. But um, yeah, heavy kick. Yep, you're a little ahead of me, but. Yeah, his strongs are so good. They're both plus two. They're both really long levels. It's Wake up heavy nice. DP. Just do it. That is... Okay. That is Shade of Street Fighter 4. I wonder if he knows, like, the invincibility properties of all the DPs. Or he's just doing it because it keeps working. Um, I, I, don't, I wouldn't give him that much credit. I would say it's more likely that he didn't know that he didn't have meter for, uh, for EX and he just got heavy. Yeah, that makes sense. A good punish, by the way. Um, that is minus five. There's no there's no save DP cancels in this game. Thank God. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Honky Boo go, goes ahead and takes that. Mostly with just anti airs, honestly. Yeah. He did get jumped uh -huh. in on a few times, which is uh, which cost him a round. But it looked like he he started to just cat, like compose himself and just realize, mm -hmm. you know what? I don't have to do anything in this matchup. I can just yeah. back off and just Jigs blow himself up. You have to fight. How Jigs is playing? You have to you have to let them kill themselves. You have to let them kind of give give yourself the opportunity. No, there no we go. Yeah, no sweep punish, interestingly enough. Like you can get a lot of about punishing those sweeps. Just keep jumping in. <laughs> it's like... This oh, is wow. weird. This is, this is watching Ken habits clash with Yurian habits, and it's like Yurian's not not used to having to, to come back, to sit back and uh, and play the defensive game, but... And I mean, honestly, Yurian players, like, you don't you don't have to, but in this match, it'll just be way easier to win with anti-airs and pokes. You He's don't not have confirming to go off a of crotch strong. Uh, crotch strong... He doesn't, he doesn't look like he'd be super solid as Ken's confirms right now, but um, you he's know, not he's, he's getting enough he's straight literally hits. Just, uh, he's literally just doing stuff. He's not using hit confirms in the slightest. We're seeing a lot of jump-ins not confirmed, a lot of crosses oh, not confirmed. Lucky red. Red. Nice. Oh, yeah, that was so smart though to, to dash from block because no, I really thought she's going to do something. that light Tatsu, you have to have those when you're playing any, Ken, any kind of Ken, especially this kind of nutty Ken. 
Uh, goes tries to go for the elbow anti air, but uh, unfortunately he's a little bit yeah. too late on it. Doesn't quite capitalize. Just gets just keeps getting hit by jump ins and then like one normal. <laughs> yeah, literally um, Honky Miku doesn't have to press forward at all to win this matchup. You, that's not a button that you need right now. You just need standing heavy kick, maybe crouching heavy punch, and you need to learn to capitalize off of those enemies. No punish on the sweep again. Even though a crouching medium punch won't reach, you can just counter sweep those. You gotta gauge that distance. Jigs is like one of the players that like even like a player like even a uh, like a platinum or something player will have trouble dealing with it. It's like it's so it's so kind of like not what what you expect a lot of players to feel like. It's like one of the things that well, um, one of the things that you have to deal with. Again, miss players. times that crush counter punish on the uh, the light DP. The more times you miss that, the more often Jigs is gonna be tempted to go for it because it's clearly working. Yeah. No confirm punish. Punish. There we go. He goes for a small punish Please there. Punish. Again, misses the the DP punish on the light DP. Oh my god! No, he, he didn't even have zero to three on, on those. that one though. He, he could have just went for anything. Um, but yeah, like playing a lot of online or, or a lot of different players gets you experience with players like Jigs, who just aren't traditional, aren't playing normally or traditionally. So. I would actually say that Jigs is playing nuttier than usual. I think this is just the style that he decided to go with today. Ooh, big jump in, nice. I remember last tournament I oh, gave him the advice to, to confirm more off of his uh, off of his normals and jump ins, and instead what he decided to do is confirm less and jump in more. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I do think if there's any to take away from this is that he should really work on confirms. Um, they're not easy, but he's getting up so much damage. Um, like every time he lands a jump in, he should be he should be getting he should be getting a combo into heavy Kitatu for 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 setup. But he's yeah, not, I actually say the um, jump ins are way easier to confirm than grounded confirms. You you should be, oh, definitely. you have all an eternity to, to visually confirm whether or not that jump in lands, and then you yeah. can even press Honestly, additional buttons to to add to it. Like, yeah. I just want Hockey to win off two anti airs. Okay, you went off one. Wait for the jump. Oh no! Don't go in. Oh, no, 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 cross up. Oh, oh, he's still throw. Super. Oh, he goes for the XDP. He's super though. Jumps back. Oh no. I think he might have been trying to get an air-to-air -air there, but it didn't quite yeah. work out. And that's going to be one on the board there <laughs> uh, for Jigs. Yeah. That was definitely... Honky, I feel, I feel like, should, this is a defining moment right now, because he can't get tilted. He had that game uh, multiple times. You just have to, have to know... Oh, he's clearly tilted. Yourself... If he was not tilted, he wouldn't yeah. be missing these anti-airs. And so you just have to... You have to overcome that, basically. You just have to... You, you have, have to, to understand know, that right now, you're not playing a game. What you're doing right now Fine. is you're in training mode, trying to practice your anti-airs. That's literally what this yeah, is. Yeah, literally. You have to like know that you're solid. You have to know that you can still play solid and win this. See, the, the air to airs are not what you should be going for. Yeah, those standing heavy kicks, they're working. So he just needs to keep doing more of that. Keep playing out of rage where that, that standing heavy kick will work optimally and then stay at that range. Instead, yep. we see the misconfirm into the tackle and then the somewhat punish. Please punish that. Thank you. There we go. He gets the full combo. Into the Aegis Reflector. Oh, now he can play his game, except for the fact that he drops the setup. He's clearly tilted right oh. now. Urian players never drop those setups. Please, just please, just wait for him to drop in here. Okay, that works. That works. Loses that his works. patience a little bit. Goes for an ex violent knee drop. Round two. Honky's clearly taking Point. way too many risks. He doesn't need to be playing this unsafe. He doesn't need to be playing offensive yeah. at all. But he's just he can't oh, break that habit. Just see, <laughs> literally, you, you don't need up. You don't need up, and you don't need, up, don't need forward right now. There we go. It's like, don't change your game. He's gonna jump again. Just wait instead of heavy kick again. Absolutely. Don't, like, don't over... This is like Shades of God is at this peak, if anyone knows what I'm talking about. Like, don't overextend. Don't, um... Absolutely. Don't, like... I'm not saying don't give Jigs any credit, but don't give him enough credit based on what you've seen from this so far. We also see... Oh, we've seen him block a few DPs, but in uh, questionable situations. But yeah, this is one of those situations where whenever Ken has meter, you wanna, you wanna consider shimming or baiting. Yeah, definitely, of course. Oh, Down to the final round. Honky Magoo, he... sitting at a meter disadvantage, still jumping for some reason. He's he going counter jumps with jumps. Yeah. <laughs> he just keeps getting hit by jumping sweeps. This is like this is like like ST level stuff. Just jumping the sweeps all day. Stand heavy kick. Do it again. Do it again. Just wait for him. Oh my God, that's, that that, that could have been game, but doesn't matter. That, yeah, that absolutely could have been game. The crush kind of punish on the EX head, but. Uh, Honky Magoo is gonna have to go back and watch. Oh, gets... okay. That was an interesting reset. That was supposed to connect, but Jigs was mashing something. Okay, please, yeah. please. Incidental please. reset. Honky Magoo please. just needs one anti air. Throws out the Aegis, but it's not gonna be enough damage to, to win on his own. Just wait and anti air. Just all you have or to do. We can just throw up fireballs. Yeah, that's also a good option. Okay, Nico. Go for the anti air violet knee drop. Not a great anti air option, but it manages to work. 
That was very close. Um, and, and, I, and I'm not, I'm not trying to root against um the Ken player, but oh, I absolutely um, root to... against the Ken player because uh, those that kind of play style will. It might get you to a certain point on ranked, but in a tournament environment when people have extended periods of time, extended sets to, to figure you out and uh, adjust, right. and additionally a double-sided bracket, and uh, once we get into top four, the sets will extend to first to three, eventually somebody's anti airs is going to stop not working, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, uh, while jumping is a more powerful option for Ken than it is for most players, if it's all you do, if you don't mix that up with with some fundamentals here and there, it's just not like, gonna work. And I, I, I don't yeah. think, I don't think he pressed stand roundhouse once, <laughs> which is like one of Ken's best footsie normals. I don't recall him ever pressing that button. Um, but if there's anything, besides, even besides the jumps, even besides the play, please practice hit confirming. You give up so much damage, just not confirming at all. And you confirm into DP and Tatsu, both of which give you Oki. Um, you know, you gotta practice on that because a lot of opportunities to just land big damage or land um, big opportunities to get damage, you kind of just threw those away. Um, right, that game could have been yours. You know? Next up on stream, I'm gonna go ahead and send an invite to Yoshi for the win versus Drillmaster. Yoshi's been playing Akuma lately, so interesting <laughs> to see how he's leveled that up. And uh, Drillmaster, I don't remember who he plays, but we'll find out. The rest of Losers Round 4 is free to go. And then after this match, we will be in top eight. Let's look forward to that. Is that when I sign off? Uh, that's when, uh, as soon as uh, Frag gets here, yeah. Okay. It is one of the things where um, I just like watching like all Street Fighter, though, because even if... Um, it's one thing I've been learning um, playing more variety of skill levels is that you can learn from any player. Um, you can you can pick up stuff from a player who is you know who is under your level for the most part, but who um, has a couple like interesting quirks and, and play styles that they play. So um, never never underestimate players and always never just autopilot. Always know that you can learn from any match you play. Even if, if you're getting bodied or doing the bodying, there's always something um, that you can be learning from that. Honky Boo pointing out in chat that his elbow kept on getting stuffed. Yeah, absolutely. That's a difficult, uh, that's a very finicky anti here to use just because of the fact that it has so much startup on it. That's one of those things that you only use when you see that jump coming from a mile away. Yeah, preemptive jumping. You get a little bit more return for. Uh... You get a little bit more return for the board. This is a classic Shoto matchup. Um, has. I don't want to say Akuma's just a better Ryu, but for the most part, Akuma's kind of just a better Ryu. So, um, oh yeah, Akuma's, Ryu Akuma's just things. the best of all worlds when it comes to Shoto's. He pays for it with... Oh, oh no, here we go. Ken. He's going to be going with the Ken. This is the OG pick. Yoshi main Ken in Season 1 before Akuma came out and then switched to Akuma. Mm -hmm. And so now it looks like he wants to he wants to show how, how Ken should really be played. It's what I think yeah. he wants. Because he's still I, got a little bit of that all, Ken pride. All, all I want to see is Crash me and Pasha stand like it into DP. That's all I want to see. I just want to see one, 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 one of that. Um, oh, jump jab! Jump jab. Uh, <laughs> Interesting okay. air, uh, air to air option there. Whoa! Very delayed V skill will cancel on that roundhouse. Yeah. Um. I, I was, I've actually been Good practicing this. You can actually, you can actually just delay uh, V skill cancel, and, and like, like it's basically an OS. It's very difficult to see coming. Oh no! Drill Master just getting worked in the corner here. It's not going to quite be enough to kill, but it's still going to be a lot of damage and Oki. Overhead? Overhead. Oh, goes for low confirm, oh, no, but that is a two-frame active move. Very difficult to Ooh, time properly. Good job, answer. Here. But yeah, Ken can actually, um, if you input run at a certain time, it, it either comes out for a hit or doesn't come out during a block. So it's like, it's a really, it's base plus. Ooh, good anti-air, crouch, heavy punch, and it goes to the V-Skill cancel the run under. Does it again. Oh, wow. Yeah, crouch is actually really, really good Yoshi's Yoshi is playing very, very, very good right now. Absolutely. Yoshi's can Ooh, is crushing. not a force to be prepped with. Goes to the armor break. Very scaled damage, however, so sometimes you just want to take that. Better to get the armor break than just eat it clean when yeah. trying to backdash and jump away. 
Yes. Oop, not a crush count on sweep. Oh, red. <laughs> the, 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 the double throw miss. Ooh, so crush counter, but doesn't V skill cancel it? Yo, she just needs one hit. Oh, that jet should be game. Oh no, he goes into. Oh, overhead. Good overhead to close that out. Yeah. You can tell Yoshi's got a little bit of those Akuma habits because Ken's anti air jab is not solid. Not as solid not as Akuma's. Good. Yeah. And, uh, but that's still even, a very even difficult habit to break. Oh, wow. Just walk up light DP. That might have been an input error. Oh, oh no. Here we go. Like... Oh, no. A little bit too far for that confirm. Oh, too far. Yeah. You have to have a that. That's the correct confirm. I... There, there's the confirm I was talking about. Thank you. Anti air DP drill messes got those. Big jump in, but unfortunately too far for the back heavy kick afterwards. Yeah. Reuse the epitome of finicky combos, man. If there's anybody who has like the most like situational combos in the game, it's, it's this guy. Okay, that oh, dash in. Dash I'm not sure what I just saw, but that was very weird. Can Uses two can PX fireballs back to back, but he still doesn't have enough damage off of spending all of his meter to make up for it. Yeah. You can actually just chip him out. If you just cancel him, bigger. <laughs> Yoshi tries to close it out with another jump jab. I'm not sure what he's trying to accomplish with those, but sure, sure it works. Him out, yeah. That jump jab I've never seen before. I didn't even know it's like a thing. I mean, it is technically an anti-air button. I mean, an air-to-air -air button, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, why? <laughs> Ken's Crotch Reese is actually just a really, really good anti-air. Oh, it's amazing, Especially yeah. because you can you can delay it and get that side switch. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely up there with, with stuff like uh, like Giles Crotch Fears, with Akuma's Back Fears. It is, it is one of the godly anti-airs. Round one. Drum Master. Fight. I'm not. I don't agree with this meter usage. Ooh, um, big punish opportunity. There is the go. ultimate punish. Ooh, just be reversal. Nice, good jump and good jump. Combo. I could have gotten a little bit more damage, but he was a little bit. Uh, uh, he was a little bit scary, wary of the range there. Yeah. Oh. Drum Master's kind of getting comfortable now throwing fireballs. Oh, no DP anti here. It's the classic video game. Throw fireballs and then when they do. Yeah, Drill Master playing extremely yep. fireball heavy, which is, yeah, that's certainly one way to play Ryu. You see two kinds of Ryu's form normally. The, the very patient walk forward Ryu's and then the fireball heavy Ryu's. Okay, so so that so that was a scenario where he was mashing DP so hard that the Crouch Fierce came out before the DP. Which, um, which, that's what happens when you're, when you're like, when you're mashing sometimes. But, um... Drill Master was doing some good stuff, but he just gets a little impatient. I actually find when going back and forth between Akuma and Ken, it's actually really hard to remember to cross counter with the right button. A lot of times you'll accidentally cross counter Ron House, like, damn, that's not the punished one. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, Ooh, there. Cross under, cross under. Confirms. Go Goes for the overhead afterwards. Nice punish. I think Drill Master's use of just mid game overheads to get a tiny bit of damage. Normally you only see them to get chips or stuns, which I yep. would normally do, but. I don't really advocate only going for that on, on situations where you can get the stun or kill, but good confirm. Just needs a tiny bit more damage here. Are we going to see the overhead in a situation where it's actually merited? No. <laughs> no, that would make too much sense. Oh, oh same side! Oh, doesn't confirm. He could have killed. Ooh, the cross-up just a little bit yeah. too deep to get anti-air, but that crouch fears. That might have been a little bit of a slot or of um, rustiness because Yoshi could have got a better combo to kill in that situation. situation. But he's still playing solid. So a lot of a lot of people give me this question: What do I do against meaty cross ups? And the answer is nothing. They're meaty. You just block them. <laughs> well, jab ends here and then goes for a throw. Get back up by Drill Master. Ooh, Yoshi throws a little bit of that meter. Drill Master seems to be holding on to it. He wants that critical log. Here it comes. No, he goes to the back throw instead. Th th that's actually yeah. That's, that's minus four, trigger. I think. Four. Yep. And it does vary a tiny Ooh, bit. Doesn't confirm. Oh no! Drops out to me. Nah, I don't. I don't. I don't agree with that at all. I, I, I want the safe super. No, jump down there for Yoshi. Down. This is gonna kill. No, he doesn't get the V skill uh, cancel. Oh no. Oh. The can instincts a little bit rusty here. I'm waiting for the X fireball from Ryu. Wait, can, oh, was that a light DP? That was absolutely a light DP, and it traded it with hits. that slightly mistimed meaty getting the win um, for Yoshi. <laughs> that was definitely an interesting uh, decision. I would have just done Wake Up Super, honestly, if you were committed to a read like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Wake out. Up Super would have made sense, but you know what? It, it worked. <laughs> a W is a W. All right, and with that, I believe we're finally into top eight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut it to an ad screen real quick and take a quick break. When we're back, I'll have uh, Frabasaur on the mic. Everybody else sit tight. We'll be right back. Okay. It was...
Yeah, uh, sorry if I was cutting out. Again, my internet's not the best. Yeah, using a VPN fucking sucks. Yep. Yep, peace out. Yep. All right, and I'm back. You there, Frabisor? All right, well, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this bracket, see if everybody finished up their match. Uh, yeah, it looks like we're all set. Our next match on stream is going to be Infinist versus X Arrow. So let's go ahead and send them their invites. From this point on, because of the fact that we are in top eight, we're going to be streaming every match. If you want to know, if you want to follow along and find out when your match is going to happen, then go ahead and take a look at challenge and follow the match numbers there. Uh, right now, you can, you can see our match number 43 is going to be Infinite versus X Arrow. So let's go ahead and send them their invites. So you there? I can't seem to hear you. Yeah, your mic doesn't seem to be working. Not sure why. Uh, you should be able to set whether it's push to talk.
In the meantime, you guys just hope you're enjoying this Ed theme that's going on right now. It's good weight music. All right, exit on Infinite. You guys are free to go ahead and start while uh, while Professor gets his uh, his mic settings fixed. I'll just have to solo it up for a bit. No, apparently Infinite has to take a break. In the meantime, let's just go over the ads real quick again. After this stream ends, we're going to be uh, hosting uh, twitch.tv slash Oh, hey, how's uh, it going? There we are. Hey, how's it uh, going? Hey, thanks, man. I guess we just needed a restart there. It was glitched out. Oh, weird. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Yeah. All right, well, we're waiting on Infinite. taking a quick break. Um, but yeah, tell me about yourself, for episode. I don't know that much about you besides the fact that you, uh, you host coaching streams from time to time. Yeah, uh, so my name is uh, Josh, and um, I'm in uh, East Coast. I've been playing fighting games since 2013, um, and when I first started, I found all beginners and training content to be absolutely a foreign language. <laughs> so um, once once I finally got, got capable and competent in fighting games, I knew that I always wanted to make that stuff that I could never find. Um, and so it was like this last March after final round, meeting a dude at um, that was just playing casuals and someone was trying to tell him what to do and he was asking questions and the kid was like totally deer in the headlights. Nothing made sense. <laughs> so the guy got frustrated, got up and left. I was like, you know what, it's time. It's time to make stuff. <laughs> so uh, I, you know, I started I started my YouTube series called Fighters Dojo. Um, it, it got picked up by shoryukin.com and it went really well. And then as I kept making it, I kept building stuff. I eventually um, got noticed by a new challengers, so now I'm in here as a coach. So I'm just really cool. passionate about teaching people how to play. And uh, you play Nash? It looks like you're a proposal. I do play Nash. Oh, interesting. Yes. All right. Good to know that we have uh, resident Nash now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Up he's, he's work, but he's fun. But here we go. All right, we got Xero with his little bit inexperienced, but he wants to prove that he can uh, handle this tournament with Chun. He's won it recently with Rashid, mostly with Chun, and then he switched to Rashid in that last Grad Finals match. Then we got Infinis with his trademark Mika. All right, sounds good. This is so people were complaining still that they hate Mika, and I get that season one, season two, it really just comes down to if you keep her out, then she can't win. It's when she gets you, it's pushes you to the corner that becomes a problem. You see a little um, bit of that lack of familiarity there coming out of uh, X Arrow. He drops that stun combo, which is something that actually absolutely sucks when you drop that combo against that stun target. Never wants it, but his normals and his anti are quite on point. He's been putting in work. Clearly, his neutral set. He That's absolutely has easy. that crouching light kick uh, confirm on lock. I don't think he's dropped that a single time thus far. Yeah, he's, he's looking real comfortable. Really comfortable. Even though he got put in the corner, he got himself out. Yep. There you go, round one. Oh no, it, I'm not sure what he was going for there. It might have been a whiff input and a command grab. Yo, belly flop. I get hit by that all the time. I think it's such a tricky move that she's got, even though it's super minus. Just blowing through though, who cares? Armor. Oh, I love Infinite walking back, trying to shimmy, maybe trying to bait a uh, spinning bird kick, and then Xero just wakes up with a critical crouching light kick. Doesn't care. There's the, there was the bird kick. Body splash. Lady Mika yeah, just putting right. on the pressure. Oh, Exeter just has to block for days, and he jumps right into thinking? Nadeshko's oh. chest. Oh, no. Lose-lose scenario. I don't know what he was thinking after. I mean, maybe he was trying to jump out after the charge drop kick. Because, um, you know, there's never a scenario to press buttons after. It's very hard to have that. Lancy. It's very hard to have those nerves to steal. Just get to wow, he blocked that body slash. I couldn't tell which side I was going to hit on. <laughs> that must have been pure luck. Dope. There it is. All right, command Giant grab. Swing. But you threw him away, so let's go ahead. Chun likes that. Oh, doesn't like that, though. Yeah, for those who are not aware about Mika's command grab, she's got one long range, huge damage command grab, and then one Oki command grab. Mm -hmm. So he used the one that's the long range damage there and threw Chun into a very favorable range, but Arrow kind of threw it away, missing that anti here. You saw it cost him round, and eventually the dimension just was game. Big command grab finish there. I mean, big critical art finish there for Infinist. Takes, puts one up Mika on the board. Wins.
Okay, Magoo says it's a top tier jiggle match. It absolutely is. You got it. You got it set to first to two. Did you mean to change it to first to three? No, it goes up to first to three once we hit top four. Top eight, we're still gonna do top first four. to two. Top four. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, cool. Just checking. Oh, it looks like we're absolutely gonna have a character switch out of X Arrow here. <laughs> he ain't doing it. He said nah. <laughs> he wanted to prove it. Maybe he's taking a break. Maybe maybe he's not switching. But... So yeah, he actually has a ton of characters. So I wouldn't hold it past him to to pick somebody that I've never seen before. But uh, we'll Let find me... out. Let me hop out of here. Boop. Cool. <clears throat> yeah, that didn't really seem out of hand. I mean, if he's if he's that worried about the. You know, he said he wanted to do it with Chun. It, did, it didn't really seem that out of hand. When you get to the... When Mika forces you to the corner, everybody sucks against her. Like, it's just the facts. That's her strongest time in the game is when she puts you in the corner. Her, her pressure is ridiculous. Her setups are super hard to guess against. So, I mean, I don't think he should feel like he couldn't handle that match. It was pretty well in hand. He just missed an anti here or there, and then he yeah. got put into the blender. Mika's one of those characters whose pressure, it seems a lot more intimidating than it really is, especially now that yes. uh, she's had her mid-screen options nerfed a lot. Like, once, if yes. you actually just hop into the lab and just take a look at Mika's options, just for like 30 minutes, you start to realize, like, wow, there's a lot of stuff that she can't do after certain things. Like, after Lady Mika, the pushback on that is so ridiculous that she actually, she... She can't reach with her Oki command grab anymore, so she has to settle for the damage on a giant swing or just keep just walk forward and go for another Lady Mika or something like that. And then like yeah. it's just a bunch of small things like that. She also has very very, very few plus buttons. She's got drop kick and she's got jab, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, because they got rid of um the, the shoulder tackle. Nice read on the command grab, but doesn't get a lot of you know bang for his buck on that punish. Oh, I love just throwing the tornado out there, catching the belly flop. <laughs> Oh, this there rush down out of XO, the trademark Rashid rush down. This is so difficult to deal with. I'm sorry, Fred, but you're getting back in the corner. <laughs> oh, he could have had just a bait do the on tornado. that view reversal, but unfortunately he just pressed a button and ran right into it. Mika's view reversal Check actually back. goes the slowest in the game. One of the three slowest in the game. I think Infinite got a little bit scared by, by how quick that pressure was. He's, oh, well, let's go big damage yeah, now. Yeah, great crush kind of punish smart. and Oki. Just goes for a rock clap. Okay, no punish from, uh, or no challenge from Xero. Way out, off the wall, body splash. That's that's twice he's backed up. In Infinite is not taking his opportunities when he gets these knockdowns. And I think it's because of the, oh, the tempo change that he's just scared. Very like, the situation there for blocking that crouch heavy punch and see the, yeah. That's full on inescapable. All right, what are you gonna do? Oh, I love it. The overhead just pins Infinis down. Even if she would have blocked that, even if she would have blocked that overhead, couldn't have punished it because of the fact that the tornado was sitting there right behind you. Good out yeah, here, so you can see, just the tempo change here with Rashid has really thrown Infinis. Like he is very uncertain. Getting in it now, but he was, I mean, he backed off heavily on his offense. Yeah, um, and if you ever want to know what it looks like for somebody to feel themselves, Xero is absolutely feeling himself. This is his character. <laughs> Oh, the cross understanding medium punch into the reset for the stun. Yeah, this is feeling himself. Doesn't even Caught go into the critical sleep. art. He allows Infinite to wake up with his. That was absolutely a mistake, actually. You don't want to give me this comeback factor. No, no, you always you always close the round. Yeah. You use the bar, you close the round. Always. No matter which round it is. I don't you know, oh, Infinite dashes into the tornado. <laughs> That was actually kind of clever. He sets up the wall. Like, yeah, I'll eat this Nadeshko, but you can't capitalize on it. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's even looking for. Maybe he was assuming it was about to disappear, but that was way too soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that tornado stays on the screen for a hot minute. And there's not really much that, uh, that Mika can do to pass through it. Like, like the only thing she has, I think, is EX um, wingless airplane, which is not going to help you very much. Yeah, yeah, and the timing's got to be really perfect. Oh, body splash just completely stuffs that mixer. I'm not sure how good le a medium mixer is as an anti even to begin with. I've it's not great. Do that. Yeah. None of his mixers are that great as an, as an anti. You'd think Heavy was great, but it's he actually surprisingly easy to stuff. It can't be, but Heavy heavy is really strong since it hits both sides. Mm -hmm. oh, man, Infinite needs to get in the lab. Resets, and work not on. going for the drop on the mixers and then just going for those throw resets. Catching Infinite it's, almost it's, every time. Catching him a ton, but he also has clearly learned that Infinite is really bad with the, the timing on block light punch mix. So he definitely needs to get the lab and work Yeah, he's out. definitely so not challenging two. it optimally. What he should be he should be jabbing there to try and uh, stop that momentum, but he's just not. I, I honestly think he is. I think his timing is just off. Yeah. Because he's getting counterfeit. I think his timing is just off. He just needs to practice to tighten that up because this is free reign for Rashid since he can't deal with it. 
And that Light Mixer is a much, very much the same situation that we've been seeing lately with uh, Laura's standing medium kick, where the hit stop is so low, even though it's minus two. And it can be immediate sometimes. It's hard to challenge it even when it isn't. Mm -hmm. Very much, yeah. Great corner pressure using that EX hurricane shoot just to just Oh here we go. He's, he's definitely he's got he's got the offensive setup down and he's confirming really well cross under. No, goes to the jump over and Nesco gets nothing. Oh nice EX brimstone, this is gonna be more Oki afterwards. Just gets a dash up into whatever you want. Goes to the Lady Mika. Backs off a little bit. I, I like the patience. That's a good time to back off. Don't give too much space. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that X Zero didn't EX Mixer. That, that would have been an amazing bait. X Zero staying composed for the time being. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, friend. That's minus two. <laughs> this light punch mixer is killing infinite this round. Nice, like nice call. Nice call. Yep. Had the read on the ex mixer. Here we go. Last round, last game. Almost identical meter across the board here. Blocks the drop kick, but then presses a button. Yeah, can't do that. You press a button, it better be ex mixer. Oh, I like the fear reversal. What are you doing now, though? Oh, no quick rise means that Mika can do whatever she wants, but he still just backs off. Oh, tries to go for that, uh, that corner jump cross up, up for like a, the eighth time, and uh, then he finally manages to anti-air it. Oh, that corner pressure from Rashid is just ridiculous. Just when he pushed himself yeah. out of range, he's still got something. Yeah, force himself to, you know, he, he, got, he convinced Infinis to make a bad gamble too, and that's where he really got something there. Because he was just feeling the pressure. Body splash is good. Infinite's making, getting again. so much mileage out of those body splashes. What are you going to do? Why is your mic out? Oh no, that is the armor through the eagle spike and then throw through the tornado using the invincibility frames. Pass yep. right through Go that, but unfortunately the EX mix is going to get him through that mix up. It's going to oh. work. Wow, that was nuts. He tried to set up the unblockable, but he messed up the timing, which is really unfortunate because he couldn't, he couldn't actually truly reversal out of that. It is, it is inescapable. Um, but it's, you know, that's, that's, that's a bummer. <laughs> Oh my god, let's go for the instant replay here real quick. Hopefully this yeah, is working that was, on stream. Yeah, that was sick. The, the mic, like, saving him through the, the EX Eagle spike. And then this. the we jump got over the... and catch the throw. That was so ridiculous. So we've seen Infinite do this before. It just busts out the V skill at the most inopportune moments, but it manages to completely, like, armor through that EX Eagle spike. And it somehow managed to get the throw through the tornado. Such a great option there. This is barely not enough to save him. It was very swag, but, uh... <laughs> Oh, you know what? I did that, that that instant replay totally didn't work, but you know what? I'm gonna pretend that it did. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> yo, look how hot that is. Oh man, there it is right there. And he could he bust through the jump over the throw through the tornado? It was so hype. <laughs> y'all saw it. We all saw it twice. Now, you know what? So, I can, I mean, you, know what you know what? I'll salvage this. I'll salvage this. I'll do it again. I'll do it again, you guys. Bam. <laughs> All right, here we go. So we see the the mic act uh, just completely armoring through that EX Eagle Spike, and then the throw through the tornado. Very hot stuff out of Infinite, but just barely not enough to close that set. All right. Oh my gosh, that that exchange was sick. <laughs> that exchange was so nuts, and then he messes it up. And then he he fortunately messes up the uh, the inescapable setup. All right, Infinis, I mean, uh, x takes it over Infinis. I think that was 2-1. <clears throat> yes, it was 2-1. It was 2-1. And you know, um, Infinis, maybe it's just uncomfortable with uh, the Rashid matchup, but somewhere between the Rashid, like, facing Chen versus facing Rashid, he just got really nervous, like, on offense and defense. You could see it. And there are times where it is smart to back off, but he was just not willing to lay the pressure in, even though he had the meter. It's like, so what if you get reversal? You, you don't just stop doing your best options on offense because you could get reversal once, you know? Um, yeah, the way that you have so, to look at it is you have to look at it as a risk versus reward. Uh, the opponent is spending spending one bar to get a tiny bit of damage, um, whereas if you block it just one out of every, like, three times, the opponent spends one bar and you get, like, three to four times as much damage punishing it. Totally, and if he's not doing it, then you're just mauling him with your corner pressure, which is your game. I mean, he had to work really hard to get Arrow to the corner, and then when he did, he, he didn't didn't capitalize too much um so he caught himself scrapping you know scraping for damage in neutral you know with the crazy everybody's all in different parts of the air because Mika and Rashid do that um and the the light pitch mixer pressure was was totally on point for arrow he got a lot of mileage out of that all right our next match is Yoshi versus Honky Magoo still waiting on Honky to go ahead and join the lobby 
Whenever you're oh, ready. Oh man, is this is is Honky gonna get another ten nightmare? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> is Honky uh, gonna get another ten nightmare? Maybe, maybe he he might get another another Ken nightmare going on that right was, now. That was that was so rough to watch that match. Oh that was god, like... it was so frustrating. Yeah, just watching Jigs jump in over and over again, and then not even confirm his his connected jump in. Oh my <laughs> gosh, I know that dude could have connected maybe two combos that like as opposed to the eighteen that he didn't, and he would have won two zero. Yeah, he got like eight opportunities to do like thirty percent damage every round, <laughs> and he just kept on letting them go and going for throw resets. It was just it was oh, awful. Get back up. <laughs> yep. But yeah, Yoshi, he uh, might bust out the Akuma, he might bust out the Ken. I think he busted out the Ken because he was also watching that match and was just as frustrated as we were. <laughs> but uh, I'd like to actually like, see his Akuma here. Do a combo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Honky had anti airs for a while and then he just didn't. <laughs> he just, just for some reason, he just didn't all of a sudden. I don't know why they stopped, I don't know where they went. Yeah, I think that, you know, he just started to get tilted after a while, and he was he kept trying to play Yurian, you know? He kept on trying to play his offensive game and just sprinkle in the anti-airs. But no, if your opponent is not going to play any kind of defense at all, if he's just going to hold up forward, you don't have to play your game. You just have to play, you know, training mode anti-airs. That's all you got to play. Totally, totally. And this happened, this happened in, in one of the training labs this week, where um, I was playing against a Kami that's got really sick offense, but once someone doesn't let, doesn't, didn't let him do that, he didn't know what to do. He had one game plan, and it's like, hey, you gotta, you gotta be able to play multiple game plans because your opponents are gonna be different. And so when plan A doesn't work, play plan B. You gotta play what you get, you know. We see Yoshi kick it off with some more jump jab air to airs. I'm not sure why he's doing this. I think he just likes oh it, my gosh, honestly. Oh just got fast forwarded to halfway through the match. Oh no. <laughs> but here we go. We're in. <laughs> All right, let's see how Honky Magoo tackles this. Yoshi is very, uh, definitely a very different Ken from uh, yeah. from Jigs. He plays a lot more fundamental. He does still jump in, as we see, but he knows how to confirm. Wait, okay, he almost knows how to confirm off those jump hits when they connect. <laughs> Actually, I think that might have not connected, so it might have been smart for him to lay off on the second Jin Buster. I, I he think he just hard. assumed that the back medium punch wasn't going to connect. He was like, dang, it did the wrong combo, but then it did, and he was caught off guard by that. <laughs> All right, run your face in a jab. Yeah, so both of them are just kind of like, they're trying to figure out how to get in the range they want to be. Because right now we're at Yuri, and Yoshi's smart to not try and challenge here, but she's standing still. Dealing with the age as well. Yeah, I love the V-reversal out of uh, Yoshi. Ken's V-reversal is very underrated. Oh, a lot of people don't like the fact that it doesn't jump, uh, knock down, but it's so fast, it's almost impossible to bait. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh dash up, get it. We dropped elbow. the combo, though. Because of that like mirror behind him, he just though. barely Let's wasn't just able to punish that drop no that, that flash elbow. Let's just walk. Let's just walk. Smart stuff. You're in the corner, though. What are you going to do? Don't blow. You got to keep from there. I'm not sure what he actually was looking for there. Probably the EX uh, chariot tackle into EX headbutt. Anticipating this gum tech. What's it going to be? I appreciate the patience, and, and Yoshi's like willingness to be patient on defense. Patient on defense has kept him from from eating a lot of unnecessary damage. That's a good close out there. I was not a fan of Hockey Miku just charging that fireball in Ken's face like that. Uh, it's very easy to see that he's charging, very clearly charging the cross fireball. Ken has a very good job of closing the distance with that EX nice air toss. Nice anti air, throwing the runs in, keeping the pressure going. I like Yoshi. Yoshi's got a good balance of off and on, um, and it's keeping him in the game where he could. This could get out of hand much quicker. Yeah, he uses a lot of that. Um, a lot of that. A lot of the jump-ins, a lot of the run stuff that Jigs was using, but he also sprinkles in the fundamentals with it. He has the fundamentals to back it up, and that's why we're seeing that's the difference that we're seeing right now. Yeah, yeah, he he kinda he definitely has an on-off switch for like aggressive and patient, which is what you gotta have with Ken. No cross under, so good block there by Hong. Absolutely. Ooh, I like the counter hit confirm there. He doesn't quite uh, pick it up. I think I think Honky's being a little bit too patient. Maybe he's kind of rattled by that last game, or maybe this is just the way he is in general. Ooh, the Hall of Mirrors he's here. Gonna, he's gonna bounce oh up Ken twice, but he doesn't pay him to pick it up. <laughs> that was, that was almost extremely scare, cool. He sure cancels the XTP. Huge corner carry, corner to corner there. See the carry, the carry was good, but Yoshi actually kind of closed that round with a higher damage combo, and like who's attempt. gonna get it on the trade? I like the attempted anti air on the EX of Alan drop, but unfortunately trades and does not trade in his favor. He should have gone for the DP there. But it's Honestly, good that he's trying. So, Magoo, Magoo is finding himself in really good like positions in neutral where the spacing is highly in Yurian's favor, but he's just not willing to push the buttons right now. He needs to be willing to throw out those medium punches and those those medium kicks because this is all total. This is scrape range right here. Nice. All right, so Honky Magoo finally gets that anti air elbow. He's been looking for that all tournament. And he finally gets it. <laughs> Regardless of how much you capitalize off of that for, it's gotta feel good to be able to hit that. <laughs> for sure, that thing is so valuable too. So like, 
Not right here, obviously, this is full range. Still Yurian's favorite, but yeah, this is range where you can really scrape really well with Yurian, and he's just a little hesitant to push the oh. buttons. I think he needs to be a little bit more in the medium kicks, a little bit more in the medium punches, get those. Oh, no. Yoshi's sitting on full resources, and he hasn't for a while. He was fishing for that standing roundhouse, but he did not V-trigger cancel it. Instead, he V-skill canceled it, which had to have been an error on his part. He has to be aware that he has all these resources that he could be spending to make this comeback. Still doesn't use it. What's he gonna oh do with that V-trigger? Goes to the back throw. When's it gonna come out? He's trying to bait that EX headbutt, but it's not coming out. Honky Bagoo learned to play patient in this tournament. <laughs> now he just went and burned one bar, but that's fine. He doesn't. He only needs Walking two. Overhead, no punish. Game. That is minus six. Good minus luck. five. Minus six. That's minus six. Yeah. Nice anti-air. Oh, Honky so Bagoo managed to close for it Honky. out. Yeah, Yoshi wins. having multiple opportunities and just not taking them. I think he just didn't believe in the hit. He was kind of reacting. Um, or rather, sorry, he was he, he had a plan and he did what he was going to do when he got the hit, no matter what happened, like hit or block. Yoshi had, than, to have been oh. aware of the, uh, had to have not been aware of the fact that he had access to that beat trigger because there's so many situations where he went for those minus oh. runs where he could have been turning that standing roundhouse into a frame trap with that beat trigger. It's one of Ken's most <laughs> powerful tools and he just wasn't using it. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's the only time he can run safely for sure. Oh, no. Point blank sweep and no punish. We've got the melody mistakes. There you go. Oh man, you gotta get more damage off that, but good job stopping the run at least. Don't let <laughs> anti -air jab again. If Yoshi can't start the match until he gets that anti-air jab at least once. Now he's playing this game. Nice cross under to the back throw. We got the corner. Make him count. Be reversal. Good. Make some space for yourself. I'm appreciating the defense I'm seeing from these players. Oh, good whip punish sweet there out of Honky Magoo. Yuri is actually an amazingly good tool to whip punish with the range on it. Yeah, and it's pretty quick too. This is good range for you, Yuri, and go ahead and scrape those buttons. Nice, Yoshi okay. might be respecting uh, Honky Moo's offense a little bit too much. He's hitting with a lot of, like, what, zero buttons right now. Yeah, Honky's doing a lot of staring. The dude does a lot of staring. <laughs> what an anti-air! Oh my gosh! Not sure that Yoshi meant to do that point-blank meaty fireball. I think that's actually minus on hit. <laughs> Overhead, okay, I don't that should be it. Very nice. This is gonna be set point here from Honky Magoo. That's right, he did win the first game. This has been this has been a really good fight for him. I totally forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, after this set, if he manages to take this, Hockey Magoo is never going to fear another Ken in his life. <laughs> I have done it. I've conquered. I've conquered the mountain of Ken. Oh, almost connects good that jump, jump in. Wasn't quick enough, yeah. Just raw tackle. I'm not sure if that's a great option, but sure, it hit. If it hit, it was the right option. Oh, still, he will not... He I mean, I, appre I can appreciate Yoshi always going for the anti-air on the knee drops, but you gotta be careful because these things are pretty tough coming in um, if you're not gonna EXDP it. Good fireball. See, that's exactly, so Honky Magoo is, is he's picking the right space to throw his fireballs, but when he gets the jump, he's not hitting the anti-air. That's that Yoshi keeps on neutral jumping, jumping, trying to bait these uh, these EX headbutts, but they're not coming out. And uh, quite frankly, he doesn't need to. Yurian's, uh, Yurian's one of those two characters in the game whose uh, wake-up options are actually so slow that you can you can meet you with a light and still block it. Oh yeah, totally, yeah. Yeah, that would, that's always really good to know that uh, Ed and Yurian, you can meet light, and it's irrelevant. Um, if they reverse, you'll still block it. Oh, absolutely, that was some great tech that would absolutely make all the difference for Yoshi right here, but he might not need it if you can make this comeback. Uh, he doesn't extend his offense. He gets some great Oki, especially to the fact that uh, the Honky Magoo doesn't quick rise, so he just backs off, reverts oh, it to neutral, where Ken has that disadvantage. Off the EX Tatsu, that was sick. Yeah, and Honky Magoo's going to be able to take it 2-0 over Yoshi and move on in the tournament. <clears throat> that was winner's side, right? Uh, that was actually loser's side. That was loser's top. That was believe. loser's. Oh, man. Yoshi. It's Doing well, Yoshi's but... gonna be out. Doesn't even get the opportunity to grace us with his uh, with his Akuma, which he has been working on. I'm not sure why he just all of a sudden he was in the Ken groove today. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, maybe next time he'll show us um, Ken plus plus, aka Akuma. <laughs> Ken plus plus. All right. Next up, our match is gonna be in our uh, top eight winner side. We're gonna see Let's Go Crazy versus Perf Thirteen. And I believe Let's Go Crazy is an Akuma player. So okay. uh, let's see how this plays out. I'm gonna go ahead and send them their invites. Crazy with three A's. All right. Versus Perf thirteen. All right, these guys have been sitting tight for quite a while, waiting for the, patiently for their match. Hopefully, they have been in training mode, keeping warmed up. Cold hands, man. Cold hands are the worst. Absolutely, it's very hard to get warmed up like in the middle of a match. Start off dropping your combos and everything. This feels awful. Oh man, Akuma Guile. So this this match is pretty interesting um, because Akuma is able to 
kind of if, if it, it's it's of course going to have to be a, a a read basis in terms of yeah, I got to figure out how this guy wants to throw his booms, but Akuma can absolutely go toe to toe using his red fire. Absolutely, um, yeah, I love so watching this matchup. Time. Because these guys, in particular, have the most matchup-specific options versus the opponent, like, versus each other. You've got uh, Guile with his Flash Kick, which is completely projectile and vulnerable to shut down uh, any kind of uh, air fireball offense that uh, Kuma might want to start. And then you've got the Boom versus uh, Red Fireball, like, sort of a uh, meta that you've got here. Where a lot of guys are just content to sit at full screen and throw booms, but full screen is the only part of the screen where uh, Akuma can actually out fireball Guile, and so you gotta oh, stay yeah. a little bit closer than you used to if you want to play a zoning type uh, mm -hmm. type of Guile here. For sure, yeah, he's the only person that can truly deal with the the, the B skilled fireball um, and just be able to chill and, and not have to worry about oh he's gonna do it and then just walk behind it. Now I gotta let him come after three. Oh, we see let's go crazy trying it. Perfine has the jump over. Oh, excellent confirm off of that air fireball. Let's, uh, Purple's not ready for it. Absolutely have to be charging down back for those. Oh, Chris got a sweep. What's the setup? Nice tick throw. Oh, it goes to the tick shimmy. Fates the throw, man, just to get the punish. Oh, this guy. Gets the jab stone. Oh this is gonna God. kill. Oh. First yeah. off, that shimmy. That shimmy was right on time. Second off, if let's go crazy would have confirmed oh, off the lights dude. instead of just going in the throw. That was round earlier, but it still worked out. I love that he didn't just do the shimmy like uh, on wake. Oh, there we go. He goes for it again, but unfortunately, he's a little bit too late for it. Wake up back. Crazy looking. Ooh, just Real comfortable down. right now. His offensive flow is just on point. Wake up Tatsu. What are we doing? So that's another one of the character specific options that Akuma has in here. His medium Tatsu is fully projectile invincible, so you can use that in anticipation for booms, and it works marvelously. Manages to get the punish with that air fireball and confirmed wow. off of it into critical art. Very huge damage here, not out of the kill. I, I, so I'm very interested in the level because I don't know what he's. Oh man, no DP afterwards. Um, I, don't, I don't feel that crazy has really shown Perf that he needs to not be doing the zoning. Whoa. Oh, yes, nice confirm. Crouch medium kick needs to confirm into critical art. I love it. Wow, did not see that coming. <laughs> that was great. I mean, so, so Perf already, like, round game one is very dissuaded from using his zoning game. And I don't know if crazy's, like, actually show anything that should make him stop doing it. You know what I mean? He's just already decided that he's not zoning right now. He's been, he's been air fireballing over those booms and it's been working out for him, but it shouldn't be because Perf should be charging down back for those flash kicks. That's the guy who's stable, right? Mm -hmm. He's just not playing that zoning game. Yeah. Going to work did bite on the shimmy that time, but still the throw game is excellent right now, coming off crazy. And I love just that uh, the less of crazy is going for the manual shimmy. He's not going for the forward heavy punch, um the the, the <laughs> forward heavy punch auto shimmy. Wow, nice throw. Crazy's oh, just full screen really nice EX demon throw. flipping the throw, manages to catch him. This is looking pretty bad for Perp. Oh, he managed to get the flash kick, but he's a little bit too early. Oh, that trade is so bad. That trade is never what you want there. Now, I mean, crazy is fine with anything. Yes. So I'm just looking so, like cake to take it. I mean, uh, crazy's will, crazy's will. patience and his offensive flow right now is completely dismantling Perp. He needs to make some adjustments. He needs to make them soon because. I mean, Crazy could just walk away with another game here. Yeah, I think Perf needs to. I think Perf needs to be more confident in his own uh, his own zoning game. It looks like it, he's just not ready for those flash kicks. It looks like he's trying to answer here with everything except flash kick, and this is not working out for him. He tried it once, and then it got stuck because of him being too early, and that's gotta feel terrible. You gotta. This is something you gotta practice timing for. Uh -huh. Yeah, pressing a button after Akuma's big plus crouching heavy punch. He's gonna... jumping. Crazy's been getting so much mileage off of just jumping in. Mm, teleport out. The in the anti air. Pack throw out of the corner. Not sure I agree with that. Finally gets a flash kick. It's the first one we've seen. Yep, there we go. There's another one. Up. You can't do that against Guile. The activation of should be it. And that's gonna go. And here we go, set point for Let's Go Crazy. Perf 13, he's starting to figure something out, it looks like, but uh, it might be too little too late. Immediately throws that mirror. Catches him with the red, okay. Crouch jab anti or the Daigo special. Yep. Still jumping in, man. Getting anti with a zone character is always going to cost you. You got to oh, steal the strength. Block that meaty cross up. That's the one situation where you can't just normally anti air. If it's a meaty, you got to still block it. Oh, Man, it's so it's not gonna kill. Oh, I think so. 
He didn't do it. He didn't do it. Oh, instant air. Wow, overhead. instant air overhead. Just closes it off with a little bit of swag. So I mean, <sighs> Perf would block one button and then he would either tech or press a button. He's getting caught in this Akuma pressure. He, maybe it's a matchup thing, but he needs to know. It's like you're not Perf's... blocking a crouching heavy punch or a crouching medium kick or a standing medium kick. And getting away with the jab after it's never gonna happen. Good. He got yeah. hit so much with just crouching medium kick fireball and lost a lot of health. To yeah, bro, his his defensive game was just across the board, not there. He was pressing buttons during frame traps. He was attacking every at every opportunity. He was mashing tech, and uh, he was not anti airing with flash kick nearly as often as he should have been. And yeah, it's just it just the the, the defense wasn't there. That's something that he absolutely needs to work on how to play a defensive game, which is like that's that's half your game plan with Kyle. Let's be honest. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. At least 75%. I mean, he is a highly defensive character. He got antsy. You know, he made some aggressive decisions because he was like, well, I'm sick of blocking. Um, but he also, he should have been blocking against Akuma that much. He uh, he should have been just controlling the neutral space. And, and when you're not, then Akuma's in and Akuma's going to work. And uh, Crazy's, Crazy's flow, his, his offensive sequences were really nice. Mixing in the throws and the frame traps. Um, he had a, a really, a really smooth... Um, back and forth with what he was doing. So I don't blame Perf for being a little disoriented because uh, it seemed like every time you thought the throw wasn't coming, it did. And when you thought the throw was coming, it didn't. That's so, a very, very tough struggle to deal with in this in exact like uh, in this exact rank range, you know? When people are, are just barely like getting to the point where they can start to tech every throw and then starting to eat every shimmy as a result of it. And it's, very, it's a very frustrating situation to be in. <laughs> yeah, I've always said, I think, I think the hardest grind in this game is platinum to diamond but the second hardest grind by far is gold to platinum that range is so difficult one of the hardest things i ever did um was was gold to platinum it's it's a very very difficult range but you, you do get very very uh well refined fundamentals by making it through through that grind so it is worth it in the end now old man crump with the uh, the one bit cheer i almost missed it because of the fact it was a kappa cheer Maybe we'll start putting the, uh, the cup on stream. Just have one cap of face in there. <laughs> so this matchup is quite interesting. I don't know how well Laura can actually deal with um, Barcelona, especially if he puts it in some awkward angles on her because her anti-air, I guess her, her heavy bolt is the best one because it's got a nice hitbox on both sides of Laura. Yeah, heavy bolt um, is definitely her best option. It can be dodged, um, in which case both the uh, flying bar clone attack and the, uh, the bolt charge will whiff. Sort of just puts that back in neutral. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yes, not something you want to depend on too heavily in this matchup. Ooh, a little bit too far for the overhead. That would have stunned. Ooh, I don't know. Laura's like wake up moving forward on, on Vega to catch that EX uh, slash there. I don't even know what was going on. Oh, here we go. I apologize. Turning on the corner pressure. Not really capitalizing for very much, but he's just single striking for a lot of. Oh, here we go. Oh man! <laughs> so there's many the heavy bolt like... charge. Yep, there's the bolt. Yes, so so many just like straight hits without a lot of confirmation going on here. Um, yeah, and euthanasia is getting caught by frame traps a lot. He <laughs> lost almost all his damage. Like he he lost like 70. You better. That was your chance, man. That was your chance to end the round there. But he lost probably 75 percent of his health to light kick standing heavy punch. Light kick standing heavy punch count. Um, he just needs to calm down in the corner, block a couple buttons. Wait, or can't do that forever, man. Oh, good she challenge there after the standing leg kick. Manages to catch that. Would look like an EX uh, Thunderclap. Slice. What do you think? You think Claw on or Claw off is better in this matchup? Because I don't uh, know if the added range is too much better than the, the better speed and hitboxes. So I do know that Claw on was recently buffed, and there's still a lot that uh, Vega players aren't doing with that. Like, you've got uh, options with that, that plus three crouching heavy punch. Um, so as far as I know, either one is viable in this matchup now. But uh, in before the uh, the Claw on buffs, I absolutely would have gone Claw off. Just so that you can, uh, you can apply that relentless uh, pressure as soon as you do manage to get your way in. I do appreciate it. So Euthanasia is very much sticking to... Uh, most Vegas like to, to be more airborne because he's got a great jump arc. Um, that the timing throws people off, especially with his medium kick. Nice read on the SPD, but you gotta you gotta make that count. That could have been a super at the end of the round. Yeah, absolutely. He could have gone into count. so much more damage, but it was still a great read on that command grab. I, I apologize, hadn't actually been going for it all game. He just finally goes for it, and then uh, yeah. New Euthanasia has the read. 
But yeah, I do appreciate Euthanasia being willing to stay on the ground a lot. A lot of Vegas do appreciate his air mobility with the Barcelona and just his jump arc and that heavy kick, you know, pulling Vegas' hitbox up. But, uh, you know, he's, he's getting a lot of a lot of mileage out of his V skill and that claw, just willing to scrape damage rather than hit combos. Yeah, we saw Euthanasia going, taking to those guys in that first round and immediately got shut down by the heavy bolt charge. So, yeah, I think that he's he's gotten discouraged. And so he knows he wants to play this grounded game, which is totally viable versus Laura. You've got the range advantage oh, yeah. and you've got the walk speed advantage. Mm -hmm. 100%. So, I mean, he's scraped about 50% off with just pokes. And you don't have to win with combos in this game. If they have le if they have zero health, you won. Who cares how you did it, you know? Um, and so, just being willing to stand the ground and hit those pokes has worked out really well for him. He's got a very comfortable life feed. Um, but this oh, impatience on pressure. offense. Oh, he just fears the Laura. There you go. Good Euthanasia reversal. goes for the V reversal in the corner. Miss still manages to back up into the Thunderclap. That's not a great option in the corner. Euthanasia is forced into it. It's really only bad against Thunderclap, though. A different button, he could have actually just backed up into a, a, a light kick punish. It's just he ah, the X Aurora manages to close it out, just completely connects from almost full screen. Wow, Catches thought, I Apollo's I, off guard. I thought he didn't come forward unless it actually the first one, the first hit connected. No, it definitely comes I, forward all the time. <laughs> whoops. So I guess maybe I Apollos didn't know that either. Um, <laughs> it's but yeah, very hard still, to see it coming, yeah. I mean, Euthanasia won that round without a single combo. Like, pay attention to that. He won that round without a single combo. That was all poke damage. Which, if they got no health, you won, man. That's, a, that's a, just as good a strategy as any other. Yeah, and I Apollos also sort of employed the same strategy, but I, I feel like on his end, it was kind of a misplay. He was just going for those pokes and just resetting over and over and over again. We saw a lot of, you know, standing light kick, standing medium punch. Just over and over and over again, not really confirming into, uh, not really confirming into his bolt charges or going for command grab resets all too often. He was just poking, trying to poke to death, and I'd like to see Apoll I Apollos take a little bit more damage there in those situations. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And and on the flip, Euthanasia just needs to be more patient on defense. I don't know if he's trying to light kick out or if he just keeps jumping, expecting the SPD to come, which is why he took a lot of damage, but it worked the one time he jumped. Um, but man, is he catching so many frame traps. Oh, yeah. And, uh, He's absolutely calling all of them out. <laughs> I know people do complain. It's like, Vega doesn't have a lot of... D it's like, yeah, it's true. But, okay. Then learn to block better. <laughs> Whoa, I have all switching it up into Cami. Okay. This is an interesting okay. counter pick. I respect okay. it, because I think, I think Cami really, really bullies Vega hard. Um... He's going to have a hard time anti-airing her, her dive kicks. Um, and she's going to be able to keep that tempo real high, which is not Vega's strong suit. So let's see how this works out for him. Yeah, I don't think I've seen uh, Aya Falls' Cami before, so this is going to be interesting to watch whether this is a real uh, a real character that he's got in his pocket or he's just, uh, he's just picking the counter pick. <laughs> yeah. He's out of win here. And it is very it is very common to uh, to win on a counter pick just on account of the uh, the match of unfamiliarity on the opponent's side, but then you're giving them more time to uh, to figure you out for them. It's true, yep. Outstanding heavy punch into the command grab reset. I like to see that. Meaty slide, ballsy, but it works. Good blocks out of euthanasia. Very patiently mixed uh, blocks that uh, that sort of endless pressure from uh yeah. from Kami. So it seems like it's really the SPD is what causes the Asian to freak out because he's not biting on any of these frame traps. And I guess it's just because Laura, he expects an SPD to happen. Yeah, um, against Kami, you can just just sit there and down back all day until Kami pushes herself out or tries to go for a, a, a take throw or something. But she can take throw at pretty good ranges, so it, oh. can, it can be frustrating. Speaking but you, of, you know, I goes for the tick shimmy, and uh, Euthanasia does not bite. He's playing very yeah. patient right now. It's not going to work, though, if Apollos doesn't show the throw. Um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. If you, want, if you want people to bite on, on your throw baits, then you have to throw them at least once or twice. Otherwise, they're like, yeah, he never throws me. So, like, why am I going to... Why am I gonna tech throws? Yeah, that's that's um, the Laura habit's peaking out because people fear Laura's command grabs even if you never use them because they know that the option is there. But with Cami, it's just yes. like, okay, you have to show your hand. Yeah, you do. You very much have to show your your, your sequences for me. To As a matter of fact, even if you do show your hand, a lot of the meta nowadays uh, versus Cami particularly is just take the throw. She doesn't get any Oki off of it. You can just wake up and reset the situation and just eat a little bit of damage in the trouble for your trouble. There you go. Apollo's grown in confidence now, throwing some throws into his game, but I just like he's, he's that first round, it took a while to get Whoa. moving. Now is that a stuff is, slide with a crouching medium punch? That was amazing. <laughs> okay, just decides to block out the Barcelona. Yeah, definitely a lot more confidence in Apollo's now in the second round. I like to be more active, more moving more, which is how Cami really gets to bully Vega. 
Um, you don't really want to just play a ranged game, and you don't want to play two Kenshi. Uh, which, you, you wanna, yeah, what you want to do is confirm into one Spiral Arrow, and then just let that pressure rock. Go Speaking for the throws, much. go for the tick throws, go for the, the endless standing medium punch uh, frame traps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he doesn't bully. really need to back up, because, you know, Vega does not have an anti here, especially not one that's going to be able to catch Candy because of um, how how powerful, like, her dive kick hitbox is coming in, and how quick it is. So, that, take that trade, that's fine. Um, just, he needs to stay in a little bit more. He's, he's, he's sitting on full critical art. I don't know if he wants to spend it, though. He yeah, yeah I mean, but you build bars, so oh, that nice Spends bar, both bars in order to get that guaranteed kill. I like that option. For sure, because I mean, it, it gets to a point where holding on to your bar actually is oh, worse for that third yeah. round because now you have to hold on to it the entire round or you just use it all and it's gone. I like um, that he found a way to, to, to close up that round without spending all of it though. Instead of opting for yeah. the critical art, he found something else and it worked out. And now he's got a little bit to deal with here. He's got a little bit of wiggle room in the final round. Ooh, standing roundhouse and tier, so good to see. Yeah. That's about the only time that they can get anti is going to jump from that far away. At least anti reliably. Um, so. Ooh, crouching heavy one. punch anti -air. Wow. Euthanasia knows his options. Speaking of confidence, Euthanasia feeling like he's got I apologize to Cammy down, but he's like, alright, that, that was cute. I feel like Cammy must be able to punish those roundhouses from that distance. I, I just don't think that I apologize knows it. It's full of roundhouses from Vega. Very minus, but uh, it's the range on it that makes it difficult. <laughs> Yeah, that four heavy punch is definitely spiral arrow punishable even on block. Cause I know Geef can jab it. Uh, so there's no oh, way. Oh yeah, he can jab it as he's retracting his arms. Yeah, yep. But Apollo's eating the Barcelona and uh, Euthanasia. He, he's not said, gonna get right, phased that, by this counter pick. Round, that first round was cute, but I figured out what you like to do is KB. I'm just gonna kind of, I'm gonna go ahead, and go back to bullying you. Yeah, this this matchup can actually be a little bit frustrating for Cami, Cami because she's used to being being able to walk circles around everybody else on the cast. But Vega's actually one of the only characters that can uh, that has a faster movement speed than Cami does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can't just walk him down. But you don't have to. Cami's, you know, as as we were kind of saying, and it looks like um, either Apollos just doesn't doesn't play uh, his his Cami that way, or just I don't know if he was not comfortable. But Vega can't deal with with Cami's like you know oppressive speed coming in the air. If he would have just you know, been willing to be a little bit more aggressive, especially with dive kicks and just mixing up dive kicks and just normal jumps to throw off the anti-air timing. Um, keep that pace up and stay in. Right, he backed off a lot when things weren't working. He just stayed in. Vega just can't deal with that, and that's a character specific. Um, other characters like Geek, you can't do that if you're playing King, because you'll just get lariated into Mix Up City, and, you know, the Boomtown. The Boomtown. Our next Dude, matchup no is going must, to no be to to Perf 13 versus Honky Magoo, which I believe is going to be Guile versus Yurian. Another interesting matchup. This is losers. This is losers. Yep, this is going to be losers, and I think this is a, what top six. This is going to be our losers round six. So, do we have is winners finals set? Uh, winners finals is in fact already set. Our winners finals okay. is going to be Let's Go Crazy versus Euthanasia, which is going to be uh, Akuma versus Vega. All right, that'll be interesting. Because both those guys seemed very comfortable and solid on the ground, so I'm, I'm excited to see how they how they work around each other, um, and and who gets who gets control of the neutral. Yeah, I want to say that one's actually much more frustrating for Vega to try and figure out a way to stop uh, Kuma from taking to the skies, because he does absolutely have air superiority over almost over everybody else in the game. Yeah, yeah, and and Kuma's back heavy punch is pretty solid against um, Barcelona dive if he comes in with the slash. Um, absolutely, and it'll yeah. obviously lose to grab, so it becomes a mind game. But you gotta, you gotta kind of figure out what you're gonna do. And I feel like everybody has their character specific options, like like to uh, just to, to to read and react and counter to all the options for a flying Barcelona attack. But that definitely takes a lot of lab work. Um, trying to trying to figure out like what perfect angles you can use to, to counter all the options is really difficult. I think I, I did the math once, and something like 26 different angles of attack that uh, the big could come in on depending That's on what he uses. That's unreal. That's I don't even know that. Yeah. I just know. I just, Luckily, I just have to know it against my character. I don't, I don't play Vegas, so I'll have to know it against every character. But, you know, character-specific stuff is just one of those things that you got to eventually work into, you know, your memory banks. Uh, or, you know, it, it gets hard to progress. So right, gotta, like gotta Perth is like going to play this zoning game, but the, the question is, does he have the answer if Honky Moo decides to try to take the skies? I see him opting for that violent knee drop. There it is. <laughs> I was about to say, I, I could see him doing that very soon. And sure enough, it connected. Doing the cherry tackle after the blocked, 
boom, which isn't a bad guess because guys tend to do something after you block the EX boom that they feel like, oh, you can't move it. Away. Here we go. As soon as the opponent gets around the Sonic Booms, Perf just breaks down. He needs to work on that defensive ability. He needs to work on patiently blocking, not not late taking every Ooh, single look from the track. Ooh, stops the B skill. <laughs> Drops that uh, that combo yet again. That would have been the round. Hawk needs to make a count, but it don't matter. He did not read the wave. Round two. Quite. There we go. Finally goes for the flash kick. Man, just not honking out of the sky. Doesn't flash kick that violent E drop, however. Yeah. Dude, maybe he's just not confident in that flash kick anti. Or it's just maybe it's not today. I don't know. But he's definitely been missing a lot. Of there it is again. Yeah, I think he's autopiloting booms a little bit. He sort of uh, forgets that he needs to also watch out for jumps. Oh, okay, goes for a little bit of that, uh, that upside down kick. A little bit of rago. A little bit of rago. But again, just like with uh, with Cammy, we're talking about how you need to show your hand before those shimmies will work. And a lot of Guile players would just go immediately for the upside down kick before establishing the threat. Absolutely. Oh, the back so bad is going to be able to whip punish that Violent Knee drop. So Perf just dominated that round. Honky didn't seem to be able to find a way to get in on that. He just couldn't find a way to do anything. Oh, I just um, so <laughs> Excellent. The flash kick reaction on the headbutt again. Ooh, gets the crush counter, but isn't able to pick it up. Gets the dash up, isn't confident in his ability to, to, to use the standing heavy punch follow-up. There's I, the, that yes, all right. Perf settling in, looking a lot stronger now these second two rounds. A lot more wow, jumping so heavy kick with punish on the sweep. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, excellent. Um, so he's wasted both his mirrors. I don't know how Adrian was for you unless he was trying just to get rid of it. So he, no, you're definitely not going to build another one. Not sure what the plan was on that that V skill. Yeah, I think he was just trying to uh, to get Perf to blow himself up with some uh, with some reversed Dying Sonic booms, which just didn't work out in his favor. Yeah, he definitely. So Perf settled down. He looked very comfortable in that neutral there, and and Honky could not. And he was either eating booms or eating flash kicks trying to get in. Um, and I don't think he ever really even had a good offensive opportunity in that third round. Yeah, in that first round, we saw Honky Magoo with, like, sort of jump over the booms with no problem whatsoever, and then Perf immediately realized, okay, you know what, maybe I should be anti-airing. Oh, no! He's falling into the Guile Trap, becoming a little bit too twitchy with his, uh, with his flash kicks. And Honky Magoo does an excellent job of baiting it. Here we go, Honky, going to work. Yes, the low. Oh, and he misses! That was a good counter hit from, but unfortunately, it's a little bit too far. Well, no, he can't because Gu he, Guile was crouching. Um, so he needs to oh, be yeah, able to, right. he needs to he's visually confirming that if the opponent's crouching, you can't end with your headbutt. Yeah, you have to end the tackle. Just a tough thing that you gotta start to, to visually see yep. on what combos you can do. Oh no, Honky Boo corners himself with an EX Chariot tackle, but he gets himself right back out. No anti air. Oh, but just Rago! Flash kick! Flash do it! Kick. Minus two flash kick, just do it. Yeah. It's the classic time to set it up, but let's oh, go. Oh, here we go. Honky Magoo finally oh, okay. gets his uh, reset. Side switch. I respect that. Yes. Oh, Very good, no. yeah. Perf just looking for looking for a... It was an unnecessary oh, risk. He dude. felt like he had to make it, though, because of the pressure of that closing gauges. Um, Absolutely, but, but Perf, is, Perf has demonstrated that he's not good under pressure. He needs to learn to just patiently block. Just accept that mix-up in that situation and then know that if you block it, that's your opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much. Upside down kick is good, but no confirm. Make it count. That's gonna hurt. Perf sitting on four critical. Nice. What's he gonna carry. do? He uses one of it, uh, one of those bars on EX flash kick to get himself out of the corner. Okay, but we've gotta be looking for it now. He's gotten hit by those EX Ooh. flash kicks twice. He messes up the air to air, and now he's got himself in the corner. Perf going perfect. to work. Ah, Another EX flash kick. The reversals are everywhere. And then Honky Boo just doesn't block on wake up. Eats a jab. That's tragic. This is gonna be set point here for for, for Perf. Oh, he just jumps into the Sonic Blade. Okay, good way to find something that's with that sweep. So I want Honky Magoo to see. Oh, he does it again. He does it again? The minus two flash kicks. That's three for three thus far. No punish on the blocked uh, reversal though by Honky. I want Honky to realize that uh, Perk has pretty consistently woken up crouching jab on his wake up, um, and he needs to start. He needs to start putting the media. I know maybe he's a little like afraid oh my of the EXDP. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, this guy's doing so much EXDP, but you can't just stop. You know, meeting as we said because they have, they've done it before. Because um, if you're just gonna stop playing offense because they might DP, like they massively won. It, yeah, the a, DPs a have done way. their job. Yeah. 
That dash up throw is good. Perf moving on. Perf is going to move on. And unfortunately, Honky Magoo is going to get knocked out of the tournament. It was a good display by Honky. He had some really, really struggles. He had some huge struggles with that, with those Ken matchups. Um, finally managed to tighten his anti-airs, but he just couldn't find his way around this. Uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing though. I really appreciate it. There was a great moment at the end of the first round of the third game, I believe, mm -hmm. where um, Honky Magoo. He waited. He waited. He was getting, you know, harassed in the corner. He found his crouching medium kick into Aegis, and instead of um, capitalizing on damage, he just crossed under and put up another Aegis and stood there. Um, so he got himself out of the corner. He knew that uh, Hockey had, or not Hockey, that, that Perf had low life. And so he just put up the Aegis and he just stood there. And he's like, all right, what are you gonna do? I'm, you know, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna walk Absolutely. up and get three offense off this and make a guess. Um, and it was just, it was a very controlled decision. It was very smart. It was very, very There were some smart. strokes of genius in that matchup for sure. Um, I, I loved as soon as um, Honky Magoo started to run into trouble with uh, jumping into flash kicks, he opted for a neutral jump and then immediately saw that uh, the perf twitched out his own flash kick. I feel like that's something that he should have capitalized on a little bit more. Start going for a little bit more of those neutral jumps. Try to bait up and punish those flash kicks. That's it was, I one think... excellent way to deal with Giles that are a little bit too, uh, too flash kick happy. I think once you once you start to get in that level of the game, though, when you want to do things like, hey, can I make you do something, right? And then they actually do it, you still kind of get surprised that it worked, and you're yeah, not ready. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's just that's just kind of being new at it. And as you get more comfortable, when you start to intentionally bait, you start to capitalize a lot better as well. It's absolutely one of those things as well that uh, it happens once, and then it doesn't occur to you how well it worked until you go back and watch it again. Like, if you're, say, watching a replay of your own match, like, wow, he just, I just baited the hell out of that flash kick. I should have been doing this more often. And that's absolutely the, the purpose of these tournaments, so that people can uh, look back on their own sets and, and just really, like, clarify the stuff that worked and the stuff that didn't work. Ooh. All right, Arrow starting out with Chun instead of Rashid. I don't know if I... I don't know if I would recommend that, but I think <laughs> he, he wants, feels like... He wants to make it work. This is this is purely an emotional pick on his yeah. part. <laughs> I mean, I guess. I mean, Ch Chun definitely outranges more. He, she can heck the crap out of her in neutral um, and just scrape a lot of, a lot of neutral damage. Um, is this actually a run back? I feel like we've seen this already. <laughs> I might have to take a look at the bracket because I, I feel like we've seen this, but maybe not. I don't... I don't remember. I don't think it was Apollos, but I don't know. There we go, Apollo's confirming there to the bolts this time. This absolutely is a run back. Apollo's took this the last uh, last time 2-0 over X Arrow using Chun, so he wants to he wants to wants this run back is what he wants. I don't remember watching this, the only time I remember watching X Arrow is Yeah, it was definitely round two, uh, so it happened very early on. Uh, so X Arrow uh, I Apollo's is the one who knocked X Arrow into the loser's bracket, so he wants to prove that he can make this work. And we see a little bit of adjustments as well. We see him uh, using oh, crouching medium punches to go into those thunderclaps. Using a little bit more of the uh, the Chun arsenal than he was before. Uh, both guys are just kind of. <laughs> I, I, I mean, Not I'm a great like... punish on that ex uh, that ex bolt charge. That yeah, could have been the, the like, round out of there. Around. Yeah, I mean those, that last ten seconds, both of them were just kind of like trying to make something happen without a real thinking of like how do I make something happen they were just like oh god something needs to work and so they were just kind of like doing stuff um and you get a little absent minded sometimes when you feel a little lost but let's hopefully reset nice SPD reset and another goes for the dash up throw Exeter refuses to wake up buttons oh just stays on the ground lets Iapolis waste his meter that's actually a pretty tricky option there versus a lot of uh, lower level touches autopilot and stuff um, trying oh, to max maximize his damage. Didn't work out though. So last time Arrow had his his V trigger activated, he got kind of fearless. He just jumped a lot. His butt tapped. Let's see if he does it again. If he thinks that you know V trigger is this super aggressive time for him. Good DX spinning bird kick man just to get I Apollo's off of him. The fierce punch like, oh. doing work in neutral, just which I would figure it would. Button. Iapolis has overhead to very good. safe. Oh, the overhead's gonna connect standing, catches Iapolis walking forward. Apollos needs Holy to wind. needs to set his fire. Chun Li doesn't have a great way to deal with that because she has to charge her fireball and it's very slow. Um needs to needs to go ahead and establish his fireball as a neutral and walk behind him. That's a that's his best way to close the gap because he can't walk through Chun Li's normals. They're too good. Um he can't challenge them in space, he'll get he'll get hit. Yeah, that actually is a surprisingly effect, uh, effective option in this matchup. Throw out that wall of Thunderclap. 
Mm -hmm. As you can see right here, he's trying to dash, he's trying to use medium kick to challenge the neutral, but he's just getting blasted by these Wow, he's getting heavy punches. Best projectile, he's getting almost, heavy punches. This is almost 50% on standing heavy punch alone. So that's, again, he, he needs to find a different way in in neutral, because what he's doing is not working, because it doesn't work in this matchup. Just yeah, refusing has, to establish his projectiles. Laura has a huge arsenal of tools, and you absolutely have to use all of it if you want to take all of her matchups without having to counterpick. She's definitely, Absolutely. she has to play a very different style for a lot of different opponents. And when, like she gets, from when she gets out neutraled like this, that's when, yeah, you gotta start depending on those thunderclaps. Although you wanna charge them. Yeah. them stay on the field charge them, don't be afraid to use the bar. Do a quick EX one and walk behind it. Laura is not super bar dependent because of how good her, her offense is even without it. Especially Absolutely. if she can activate the neutral. And she builds bar really well too. So I mean, go ahead, drop the EX, throw the quick wall out with extra hits on it, and start closing the gap. Dashes into that fireball. Exeter playing super patient right now. Must be really frustrating for Eye Policy. Just trying to find any kind of situation he can. Oh no, Exeter just goes for the crouching jab after uh, restanding there after that anti air. And it works. Ayers is just pressing buttons because he knows it's working. Absolutely. He's pressing buttons because he knows it's working. There it is. Up, wakes crouching up crouching right like again. It's a good option against Laura. She gets a very few real OP setup. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have a three frame in this game, for sure. Apollos, he hasn't figured out the adjustment that he needs to make. He's still, he's still uh, staying away from Laura's fireball to set up in neutral. Oh he's no. got the corner though, see if he can make something happen. He instant air kicks himself into the corner. That's not looking good. He doesn't quick rise off of the throw. This is going to be a huge momentum swing here for I Apollos. Excellent oh, read, but he doesn't make it count! He drops the, the bait punish. was perfect, but he didn't make it count! Next bird kicks, that's tragic. That was his opportunity, that was his time to shine, and unfortunately it slipped right through his fingers. Next arrow is going to move on once again into, uh, I believe, Losers Finals. And I apologize, unfortunately, he's going to be out of the tournament here. But you put on a good show. Hey, that's again, that's kind of what we were talking about earlier. It's like, you can't only plan aims. I mean, if you, when, you're, when you're just learning and you're kind of doing your bronze to silver kind of grind and developing just the basics, you only need a plan A, and it's fine. Mm -hmm. But after that, you need to start having plan B, plan C. And, and what he should have done there is stop trying to work through the neutral with the way Laura normally does, which is walking and her standing medium kick. Um, because she can't do that against Chun. It doesn't work. She needs to set up the fireball wall. She needs to charge those fireballs, walk behind, push Chun to the corner, and go to work. All right. Just with that, we're going to be finally moving into our top four loser semifinals. Um, so we're going to be changing the battle settings up to first to three. I'm going to go ahead and say that out loud so I don't forget to do it like I always do. <laughs> <laughs> And we're going to have x Arrow versus Perf13. So good luck to both players. This is probably going to be Chun versus Guile initially, which is going to be a little bit of a struggle. I don't know what, Ch what Chun does about against Guile, to be honest with you. Honestly, she just suffers. Yeah. She, she, she really does. Um, if this, But, of course, that's always if both players can maximize their character's potential. It's never just a given. Right? There's no such thing as pick this character and you automatically win. you got to be able to actually maximize that character. Um, if, if it's going to be that 9 one 10 match. Oh yeah, so both, both players have to use all of their tools most effectively before it even comes down to that uh, to that difficulty. But uh, mm -hmm. I feel like what this is going to come down to is uh, is how good at uh, reading booms and getting those 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 jump-in punishes um, is, uh, is X-Arrow going to be versus Perf here. Because Perf has demonstrated that uh, he's not always on point when it comes to those anti-airs. Sometimes he auto a little bit too hard on those, uh, on those booms. It's true. Is he seemed to, yeah, he seemed to struggle to, to really... Um, solidify his zoning, um, which you, you really, I mean, that's Guile's, you know, that's, that's Guile's design. Um, and so it's always something that you need to make sure you have tight and you have uh, consistent consistency in. I also want to see a lot more of that crouching medium punch out of uh, x -Arrow. He started showing it off a little tiny bit to get past those thunderclaps. Um, yeah. And it's a little bit of a risky option because of how tricky it is at time, but uh, if you can get that working. Yep, All scrape a little damage and point. close the gap. Yeah. Very useful. <laughs> right off the bat, he just shows it off. Yeah, I have this. <laughs> this is something I'm willing to do. Even though it's impossible to catch Gal with that range, so I don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> I don't know, he's just trying to pass under a DX boomer. I don't know. There it is. That was really slick there, but unfortunately can't get much afterwards. Nice jump in. Good confirm of that Perf sweep. I like that count. combo. Yes. No quick rise from the X the arrow. He's just going to end up letting him take Oki that he could have otherwise avoided. Perf that's gonna is take totally it. on point. Unless you have an explicit reason not to, you always want a quick rise. 
I like the attempt there with the uh, the Kikoken at the start of the round, but of course, the <laughs> also had the no, right read. You, you really can't play that game against Guile. So nope. It's not this is a enough. losing battle. Very much a losing battle. So Chun's in a good spot right here. If I were Perk, yeah, well, good anti air, so now I'm either going to smother or I'm going to back off. Because Chun Absolutely. loses in both those spots. I don't want to stay right here. This is the one place I don't want to be in Guile versus Chun, because her normals make it hard for me to throw booms or to challenge her in any way. Nice anti air. Yeah, you either want to be absolutely in her face and plus, or just out of range of her normals and throwing booms. Yes, yes. Which he's, he's finally backed up to, but now he's, oh, he's still he's chilling in that spot. Excellent. Ooh, excellent crush punch. punch. Yeah, the EX boom there. Oh no, x sort of gets the jump in, but unfortunately Trey is not able to capitalize for very much. Okay, Kyle's got the the mini booms activated. Agent blocks out of x -Zero. Perf 13 actually mistiming that uh, that that shimmy uh attempt with the upside down kick. Just EX boom, is that a punish? Uh I think it is, because I, I know I know probably. Lightning Legs is minus. I just don't know if that specifically punishes. Either way it worked. Perf 13, uh, Perf takes one, puts one on the board. A reminder, this is going to be a first of three sets. So these guys have an extra long time to adapt to one another's play style. Yeah, would not be surprised if we go right to character select. Nope, he's going to go again oh, with Chun. <laughs> Exeter has an extra long time to consider changing his main. Or changing who, his, who he's playing. Oh, yes. Spinning, Spinning back, back fist. fist. Oh, there, that was sick. Empty jump upside down. Take that was a good look. Does it pursue the sun, the, the sun, the stun too aggressively? But so I mean, especially when you got this much range on Chun, that's fine. You don't have to stun her. You can just back off. What you gonna do? I mean, really, what you gonna do? Perf 13 runs into that uh, that second part of that EXM token. It's a little bit of a, a weird property on Guile's uh, EX Sonic booms. Actually, is sometimes even if you're clashing against a two-hit projectile, they'll just pass right through each other because of the fact that yeah. they're so fast. Yep. Very nice. A nice boom rhythm, giving him a couple of regular ones, and then he's there when he exits too quick. Perf 13. Perf 13 looking pretty strong right now. Quite. Excellent read right on the opening gambit there. Yep. So as far, x has been assuming that Perf's just going to open the round with either a flash kick or a uh, sonic boom, and so Perf took advantage of that. Yep. Charge characters are going to be down back, so the overheads are pretty effective against them. Cross up flash kick out of Perf. Perf sitting Overhead on full again. bar right now. We could see a critical arc confirmed. Especially with this punish, but nope, doesn't come out. Alright, Perf is activated. Got him in the corner. See if he can get some work done here. <laughs> Just the one jab. Perf 13 manages to work his way out of the corner. One punch at a time. Overhead again, but he can't confirm off of it! Oh, here we go. Oh no, he drops the confirm off of the overhead. This might be a With the killer fourth here for overhead. <laughs> Perf landing the overheads, but just not confirming the damage. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, he's been taking all of this damage off of his overheads uh, after his overheads not in V-Trigger, and then once he finally gets V-Trigger, all of a sudden he fails to, to pick up that, to capitalize. Wow, how did that whiff? Yeah, I'm that not sure what so happened there. I think Exeter just walked forward just enough for that to whiff. A very powerful option against uh, opponents who are a little bit Especially, jump happy. Yeah. If your anti airs don't work, you just walk them down, walk out of the range of their jump ins. Chun does have the, the, the walk speed to do too. Wow, flash kick reaction to the overhead. I love it. Perf finally saying, all right, I'm not getting hit again. Not again. Oh, jump back into it. Just sit on it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, very good meaty forward heavy kick. Doesn't continue offense afterwards, however, and just lets Perf fall back to this, uh, this Sonic break game. Not sure what the point of that view reversal was. That might have been an input error. I think he was going for a good Hoken. Yeah, it was just still in blocks then. There we go. Exit on oh, I see. Back I see. Now. I'm like, what's Arrow doing? He's looking for a boom, mm -hmm. um, so that he can. Oh, the rock up! He was looking for a. He was looking for a boom to slide under activate, so that's why he just kept sliding. But he needs to make it happen now. Ex is good. It's gonna be game two for Perf 13. Guile wins. Yeah, Arrow is really struggling to get in, but that's just normal matchup. When he does, though, he's not quite capitalizing. Um, a lot of times.
perf will just kind of activate V trigger and bulldog his way out. Um, because by that point in the game, he's built it just off of how much boom game he's been throwing all the, the whole time. And right, uh, it looks like we are going to finally see the character switch out of yeah, uh, out of X Arrow. Yeah, not surprised at all. So let's see if Perf knows how to deal with light punch mixer pressure because uh, this could get really out of hand really fast if you're going to let him just walk all over you with that. Um, because once he gets you rattled and frustrated on defense, if he can read the the DPS. Uh, it becomes just the worst of times. Oh yeah, absolutely. x Arrow is going to... And, and you know that he feels himself when he picks Rashid, right? So he, his instincts sort of improve when he's in his zone like that. And so I, I feel like we are going to see a lot of uh, panic EX flash kicks and a lot of baits and punishes out of, uh, out of x Arrow. But let's see how this plays out. I know for a fact that x Arrow with his Rashid, has no problem dealing with zoning. As a matter of fact, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see some uh, some air EX Edel spikes <laughs> because that move yeah, is yeah. completely projectile and vulnerable, and you bet yep. XO knows how to use it. It's great damage and corner carries. There's so much benefit from it. Sunburn Guile coming. The Pasadena Mall Cop Guile. <laughs> they did not receive oh, their shipment of suntan lotion for the week, <laughs> and so now everyone at the Air Force Base is burned. All right, extra plane. There we go. We see the air eagle spike trying to close the distance a little bit. Oh, mistimes the visco no, a little the bit there. Roll, the roll is difficult. Oh man, but just going in quite the man that was working. The zoning is still pretty effective against arrow. Yes, punish. Very nice. Perf might um, have been able to punish that a little bit better, but it's a little bit tricky. You got to close the distance. Here we go. Perf found his way in, pushed into the corner, and he does not. He's struggling with this light punch. Mixer pressure. Reversal. Into the EX flash kick, we've seen that before. Oh, out of Can we change his name to Rago 13? Rago 13. Oh no, missed times the throw and gets back on. Throw back out of the tornado. Just chuck this dude. That's actually the correct nice. option there when you got that tornado looming above. The best thing you can go for is a throw. Try to help you pass through it with the invincibility. Yeah, if you know you can land it for sure. You don't want to get caught. Um, you know, whipping a throw because your hand will get caught in your fly. Solid round for Perf. Yeah, Perf sitting on set point here. Arrow not having much wiggle room because of the fact that he started this set with John. Yeah, Arrow, Arrow is uh, on tournament life here. Can't quite get the punish. She flew away on this magic carpet. Nice jump back jab. And now just creating that beautiful space that Kyle wants in this matchup. The roll is the not too easy. Roll. Yes, punishes the roll too. Yeah. Perf is looking real comfortable. Oh no, gets the hit by the upside down kick, but no capitalization by Perf 13 here. Got to pick those up. There are three hits left. On Whoa! The what even happened there? X Arrow managed to get that uh, that that tornado enhanced jump out into the corner, and then it goes right back out. Just doing an EX boom there. I guess it's not a terrible option. With how quick it is? It's bound to trade me something. It's a second, second tornado whirlwind. Tornado the Oh, this is going to be a tough situation here, but Perf patiently blocks everything and punishes the V-Scale kick. That's what I like to see. That's the kind of patient defense that'll win you tournaments. Perf moves on. Excellent, excellent third game from Perf. Looked very comfortable the whole time. Um, could not, just couldn't, Rashid, Arrow could not find his way in. Um, and it looks like the frustration got to him. He started making a lot of uh, just unnecessary risky decisions because he couldn't make it through. Perf takes that 3-0 over Arrow and manages to move on into Losers Finals. But right now, let's take a look at our Winners Finals match, which is going to be between Let's Go Crazy's Akuma versus Euthanasia's Vega. Let's go crazy. Let's go crazy! The mob stack guess... on reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Perf should just stay in here, right? Rather than rewrite him back. Yeah, he can stay as long as he opts the bottom. Yeah. And he's gone. <laughs> oh, and he's gone. <laughs> it was a good idea. Because he was going to be the next match anyways. I am excited to see this though. Both these guys do look comfortable on the ground. Um, and they have they have solid anti-air games. So this will... this. I, I really am excited to see the back and forth play here. And oh, yeah, absolutely. Euthanasia has demonstrated that he knows how to use all of Vega's buttons to, uh, to the best of, of their anti-air ability. But the problem is that Vega's are actually a little bit limited when it comes to those options, especially against uh, Akuma's air fireballs and his demon flip pressure especially, which is 
extremely hard to deal with in certain situations. Mm -hmm, so let's see sure. the answers he has. Vega does have other options to deal with if he goes for air oh, fireball, especially if he can slide under and then get a punish on recovery because of how much landing lag there is on the air fireball. And as but, we mentioned yeah. in the last matchup, Vega also has that walk speed to his advantage, so sometimes instead of anti-airing, the best option is just to dodge the, uh, the jumping altogether. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I fast forwarded pretty far. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, excellent. Oh, not quite a whiff punish, but a crush counter sweep after the uh, EX rule. Not sure what Euthanasia was trying to press. Just jump back in the corner is good. Making a little bit of space for himself. No anti. Oh, go for the shim. He's not quite, uh, Euthanasia not quite taking the bait, but still eating the counter hit. Uh, oh, standing no, in game. Count. Euthanasia, yes. Let's switch the sides here. Why don't you go in the corner? Ooh. The that was nice. Flying Barcelona attack mix up. That was very tricky to deal with. Uh-oh. Oh, and then let's go crazy having the mix-ups of his own, but unfortunately, Euthanasia managed to block it patiently. Euthanasia tried to make that easier for himself. Oh, the sweep! Why would he do it? Oh, yeah, that was a very actually. risky sweep, so and then Euthanasia, yeah, Euthanasia tried to, to make it on easy on himself. Euthanasia tried to make it easy on himself by blocking, by staying down, but it unfortunately made it harder for him because the fireballs were there when he stood up. We acknowledge the read on that uh, that EX roll, passing right through the fireball at the start of the round. Euthanasia immediately going off to a great start. Oh, counter hit crouch oh, punch. Like Don't yes. capitalize. So a lot of people, when they see Vega dash up, they're thinking it's coming with the grab or the EX grab. Absolutely. Right? So they go to do something, and so we caught him there point blank with those medium punches, made it count. Yeah, that's the can uh, empty run tech. <laughs> <laughs> Another point blank sweep. Let's go crazy, staying true to his namesake. <laughs> EX oh, DP is the sweep, in. and then. Feature cancels it and unfortunately isn't able to juggle that into a DP. There just really there there really wasn't a good reason to, to even do that there because if he blocks it, you're getting hit really bad. I mean if he doesn't you win, but you can't save yourself. Um, there would have been a much a much better, more patient probably offensive option there for uh, what's his name? Euthanasia, but that's I mean, a win's a win. No one cares how you got it. You know, we only record the W. Yeah, yeah we, we've seen this in Euthanasia's previous games and tournaments as well. He is a little bit uh, too hasty to resort to that sweep. Um, and if you do have the V-Trigger Rose to, to cancel it and make it safe on block, make it safe ish on block, then uh, then yeah, go for it. Otherwise, yeah, you do not want to open yourself up unnecessarily like that. Ooh, nice. the shimmies! Coming at him, let's go crazy, let's go. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Crazy getting an action, getting an accidental throw in there. I know you're looking for attack, but when it works, there it we works. go. That's what I like to see. That back heavy punch into demon flip, turn that anti air into damage and Oki. Such a powerful option for Akuma there. That was an excellent whiff punish up by Euthanasia on the demon flip that came up short. Ooh, Ooh. I like it. It, it almost worked, like but it still kept it from landing on the fireball. Because he's gonna build another V trigger. Oh no, let's go crazy off of the crashing fierce punch. I'm not sure if that was an input error, but that's not gonna work against Bar uh, flying Barcelona attack. Spikes Euthanasia back to the ground, and there we go. Take through is gonna be able to close that out. Let's go crazy has a. He, he mixes his throws into his very well. Absolutely, um, yeah. It's a, it's a big part of his offense for sure. And we were talking about this earlier. You have to show your hand before the shimmy start to be effective, and let's go crazy is doing an amazing job of that. Every time you see your opponent tech your throw, that's an immediate uh, sign for Let's Go Crazy. Next time, maybe I should shimmy there. Uh, oh, just Another sweep. crush counter sweep! Why does he keep doing it? But it keeps working! Oh, man. Getting Euthanasia with in. the struggles on the cross-ups. Euthanasia falling apart. Could hard. kill if he goes into critical art. I maybe. believe he will, yeah. He's going to be very close. Should be one touch. Oh! I want to say that might have killed if he actually used light DP instead of medium or heavy there. I honestly don't know. Oh, the EX! And it kills! Kills with thought... zero HP on the board, Euthanasia. I, I thought really that strong. was going to be a pixel. I thought that was going to be a pixel. But that's the second time Let's Go Crazy has gotten caught trying to DP the, um, the Barcelona dive and it giving him a fireball instead. He needs to notice that and just kind of maybe either make some adjustments or give up on the thing because the, the tactic is not working. Let's draw attention to the fact that uh, Let's Go Crazy just challenged after Euthanasia's crouching heavy punch with a crouching heavy punch of his own. I feel like Euthanasia should pick up on that and try to frame trap next time he Absolutely gets in the situation, right. but eh, it might not come. Let's Go Crazy has another stun combo opportunity, and there it goes. Let's Go Crazy is going to put one on the board. 
Euthanasia dying there with full cool. V trigger and critical R. That's gotta suck. That that, that feels bad. <laughs> you never want to go out fully loaded. Yeah. You never want to go out fully loaded. All right, taking a, take a second to think about it. I can appreciate that. Don't just rush right back into the match. Yeah, so we saw Euthanasia looking a little bit solid, trying to uh, deal with the jump-ins early on, but then eventually he just started to break down. You can only hit here so many times before it just stops working. Rago slide working out for him this time. Dash up throw. Back throw. It doesn't overextend afterwards. Understands you don't get Oki there and shouldn't for doesn't force the situation. Man, just to bait a, uh, a throw tag out of let's go crazy. That's something yeah, I feel like you need to capitalize on a little bit more, especially as Vega. Vega's the king of shimmies. <laughs> Excellent slide out of the fireball. Euthanasia showing a little bit of preparedness there. Can he close that? Yes, he can. Closes it up with a cross up. Flying parts on attack. I like it. That was a that was an excellent punish um, with the V trigger on the air fireballs. Look for that hard read again. And he's pressing a button after that. He should know that he's minus on uh, on his EX roll. Don't press a button. Catches low. Let's go crazy with a sweep. Wow. That was an um, interesting tactic, but hey, it totally worked. Oh, throw. I mean, another throw tech out of Let's Go Crazy. He's been throw, uh, taking a lot of these throws. Euthanasia has not been capitalizing on that. And that may be the, the, uh, the edge he needs to take this matchup. Oh no, Let's Go Crazy missed timing that crazy active meaty button. Sometimes you just feel like no matter what you did, the game wasn't going to give you that meaty. <laughs> Oh, like just throws the feature. You trigger. never know when a demon it might rear its ugly head in this situation. No, here we go. The, the normal cancel of the critical one doesn't come out. Saves the meter. And still gets the win. Puts the round up on the board. Takes him to the Euthanasia, final Euthanasia, just getting really, just, I don't know what it was. Got impatient. Maybe he thought he was reacting from there, but he really kind of threw away the V-trigger unnecessarily. Yeah. Um, at the end of that last round. Because he needs to, he needs to know, right? He I feel like to, he's, he's using it on a read. Is, is what he's trying to do. He's trying to anticipate a fireball yeah. or something with that rose. But it's just not working out for him. But you don't have to. You can totally react to it. Like Absolutely. He should, he needs to calm down and remember that, like how well he's been doing in this match in the neutral. That's um, crazy. Still opts to keep his uh, his meter. He could have spent it on critical art already. Got a lot of damage on the board. I'm not sure what he's holding onto it for. Also, I mean, yeah. If I was euthanasia, I would definitely that let's go crazy is struggling hard with these Barcelona dives, and I would not stop doing them. Raw activation there for Let's Go Crazy. Not sure I agree with that. That that, uh, that V-Sugar activation is very useful for Rakuma. And uh, Euthanasia is just going to go ahead go. and Wait. put a stop to it. Put another round on the board. Yeah, so, I mean, the stories of the match here is Let's Go Crazy is struggling heavily, heavily against the Barcelona dives. He's gotten caught by almost all of them. Um, and if, if I'm Euthanasia, it's why would I? Why would I not abuse that? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, so, an I, option that Let's Go Crazy might want to consider actually is uh, to try and dodge those flying Barcelona attacks and teleport. That yeah. might actually start working out for him. And of course, it's not a foolproof plan um, because of the fact that uh, Vega has so many options to beat that. Uh, he has so many different uh, options that he can use to ferry out the flying Barcelona attack, but it'll definitely work better <laughs> than getting hit by it. It's an interesting option there. Tick throw again. Catch with the low. Nice confirm. He gets good OP off of this, goes for the shimmy, picks it up, and this gets done. What a sequence. And I think this should be so, killed. We had... No, he dropped the combo! It's, it's all right, still it picks it up right back off the floor, dusts it off, still good, I, don't worry about it. I think Euthanasia thought he was dead, he took his hands off the stick. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But that combo a, does have a tendency to whiff, though. So you gotta watch out for those stuff like that. That was a great series by Let's Go Crazy. A solid off of the low forward, and he gave three different looks. Um, on all the offensive options. So, Not a again, great punish on that sweep. You always want to take as much damage off those as you can. Air fireball, air to air. Almost gets that shimmy. Nice! Hey, is this gonna work? I think Euthanasia blocked that fireball. Yep, that's not gonna oh, work. Too far. That is a, that's a bummer, but that's a big opportunity for Euthanasia. I yeah, think it'd be, be wrong to hoard his bar here. I think he should go uh -oh, ahead. Oh, here we yes. go. Critical art confirmed. This is going to be uh, Euthanasia almost evening up the... No, yeah, evening up the life uh, yes, looks yes, like. Yes, yes, yes. I very much agree with that decision. I think it would have been wrong to hoard the bar. Um, Absolutely. I think you put yourself in a worse position for round three if you win this round. The activation, but he messes This is going to result in a 50-50 that he doesn't capitalize on. <laughs> we know that Let's Go Crazy knows how to do it. He just wasn't able to pick up the situation there. The cross-up again. Let's go crazy, gonna put another one on the board, tying it up 2-2. Two two. 
Kuma very close wins. matchup between these two guys right now. It just looks like uh, neither one of them knows how to deal with the other one's uh, shenanigans. Like, it looks like uh, uh, Let's Go Crazy is just succumbing to the Flying Parcel attacks whenever they come out. And similarly, uh, we have got Euthanasia oh, succumbing to the jump-ins and right. air fireballs and demon flips almost every time as well. This is just a gimmick fest, left and right. <laughs> at the same time, they're two very powerful gimmicks, so I don't blame them at all. Very powerful gimmicks. <sighs> I'm just, I'm, there's there no the There's no justification of that slide. It happened in a work. <laughs> Matter of fact, we've been seeing unnecessary slides out of both players a lot. <laughs> oh, Tatsu. Raw medium Tatsu. I can't explain that one. It sounded like he had a fireball, so I'm not sure what he's going for, but he's yeah. on the dash up. Another the sweep. Yeah, another point blank sweep. Didn't punish the slide. Just doing it, he wasn't visually confirming, he was just assuming it was going to work there. I'm actually not a fan of Euthanasia punishing the, uh, the sweeps as counter sweep because Akuma Sweep does not have a lot of range, does not have a lot of pushback, it's very easy to punish with a lot uh, a lot better damage than uh, counter sweep. Yeah, you do always want to optimize. Oh, comes in just as he's standing up. I thought, he might have been, I thought he might have been coming in too early. I agree with Let's Go Crazy on that was going to be okay. All right, let's go crazy. Still sitting on full critical art. We've seen this situation a lot. He has to use it if he wants to, to be able to put up enough damage to take this match. Hoarding your bar, hoarding your bars is, is never really good in, in this game because of how quickly you build it. Um, and then you end up with a really bad position in round three where it's like, well, now I have to hold my bar for the kill and I got to fight this out with no resources because I'm kind of locked. Nice confirm. It's gonna be a lot of damage, damage, but now let's go crazy. Sitting back on full critical art and oh, dangerously close to be able to kill with it. So euthanasia, or he's not actually confirming that V trigger off the medium punch. He's just doing it, and if it works, it works. <laughs> wow. Okay, two confirm opportunities. That's so crazy. Drops both of them, but manages to connect at least and uh, bring his opponent to the corner. Oh, Ooh, no! We punish on the command grab. That's tragic. That could have been the, the end of the round right there. Some crazy sitting on literally zero HP right now. He does make it in time. Here we go. One setup. Oh! He was crouching. He couldn't throw He was up. crouching. Yep. That option is not going to work. Unfortunately, he just chose the wrong follow up there out of that demon flip, and that's going to cost him. Euthanasia manages to move on into grand finals. Good stuff out of him. That was a good set, though. It was a good set overall. Yep. And next up, we're going to have Let's Go Crazy moving down into the, uh, into the lower bracket. In fighting the Perf. I believe. Finals fighting Perf. Yeah. Let's go ahead and send him his invite. All right, that was a close set. Euthanasia takes it three to two. All right. I believe, didn't we, didn't Crazy put Perf into losers? Uh, let's take a look. Perf was put into losers by Let's Go Crazy. Yep, so this is going to be a run back. Let's Go Crazy actually this was 2-0. Yeah, it was, uh, I, we remember because we were talking about the, the the intricacies of the, the Guile versus uh, Akuma matchup, mm -hmm. but um, Perf just looked really uncomfortable and and uh, Crazy walked all over him. So let's see let's see if Perf is feeling a little bit uh, more comfortable now and he can, he can run this back much better fight than the last one because the last one was definitely a little bit free. Absolutely, yeah, but it looks like Perf has tightened up his uh, his defense a lot since that match. We've seen him patiently block a lot of really crazy block strings to get here. Mm, his zoning definitely picked up. He got a lot more, um, a lot more confident and a lot more comfortable with his with his booms and anti airs, and a lot of matchups versus a lot of characters. So let's see. I hope he's ready for the run back. Kind of try and calm down the nerves and just do what your character does. <clears throat> Round one. All right, here we go. Losers finals. Let's go crazy versus Perf. Let's go crazy starting off with some fireballs. Goes for a oh, jump fireball. Here's anti air to get stunned. Needs yeah. to be flashing. Has to be flashing in this matchup. There we go. Perfect timing there, on Perf. Yes, because it time. covers no matter what a Kuma jump, a jump option Kuma does, it covers both. So you Absolutely. just always go for it. No Even if he stalls in the air with that that dive kick, it's still going to reach and anti air every single one of his options. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow, excellently spaced. Um, Bazooka yeah. there. Yeah. Then gets the anti air. This is a totally different. Last time we saw this fight, looking very comfortable in the neutral. Well, unfortunately, he was not down charge. He couldn't use the flash kick. We saw him. Oh, the late flash kick, and it missed the cross up, but no! He whips! 
Oh, good tick throw coming out of perf here. He set up the uh, the, the throw uh, threat now. So if we see some text out of Let's Go Crazy, we'll be seeing some some effective upside down kicks coming out of perf. Ex. Oh man, perf should just be waiting. Right. So here's here's a contextual thing. Oh man, the throw game. The frame traps coming out. Let's Go Crazy. The perf is gonna be able to finish Very it. Nice. So Not even spinning anymore. A contextual thing, right? Especially if you're Guile. If Akuma activates, he's probably gonna want to do some kind of air fireball. Just sit down and be ready with your EX blast. Absolutely. Take that free damage. Just know that it's most likely coming. Excellent read on the fireball. Great jump in, capitalizes, turns that into Sonic like Hurricane. It. Very effective use of the meter, yeah. Wow! Oh. Just walk up in your face, crush counter, turns that into a flash kick. Good block by Let's Go Crazy Man just to get the corner pressure working at his advantage. Again, good blocks out of Perf, good punish on the sweep as well. Perf is looking like a changed man today. <laughs> I, I very much appreciate that Perf didn't, once he lost that corner and got hit twice, didn't freak out and go, oh my gosh. Um, but just sat, and sat there and he waited patiently. He got himself in a really good spot, but crazy picking. Oh, the shimmy wow. was almost good. Shimmy's crazy. He tried to walk back into range and pick up that throw, but unfortunately he was just a little bit short. Oh my gosh! Oh my goodness! The fireball wars. Oh, the let's go crazy. Spends the uh, the let's go crazy. Spends has a little bit more meter to spend, and then just come out on top. And I think he knew it. All the bar. That was sick. Good anti here. Yeah, and I also like the adjustment that let's go crazy. Um, after losing a few rounds to to hoarding onto his meter, all of a sudden now we're seeing him not hesitating to spend it to close those rounds out. Crazy has got a really good throw game, and his shimmies are very strong. Uh, very impressive for, for the rank that he's had. It's clearly something that he's worked on. You can see the value coming out. Oh yeah, it's a very powerful tool for Akuma specifically. He has a very good shimmy game, and it's something you absolutely take advantage of. Wow, managed to get that oh, frame trap. And this is going to be enough damage to kill. Let's go crazy. Takes the first game, brings it I up feel like one that was to zero. The first game. Yeah. <laughs> That was a hell of a game. This is a very good losers finals we're looking at here. That, went, that, that quickly went from perf domination to a really close second game to uh, crazy domination. So the the counter adaptations are strong. Uh, we'll see we'll see how this this plays out now. Game two. Yeah, I don't like perf cracking under that pressure a little bit towards the end there. He should not have been pressing the buttons after the uh, blocking that jump in. That was just that goes was just for a the bad decision. first punch again. Forget about his flash. Good bazooka knee, very good at spacing that perfectly. Oh yeah, Sobots. It is a Sobot festival. Yes, throw these boobs There's in. Oh, the wow. medium Tatsu. That's the, uh, the, the peeling back the layers of the onion on the intricacies of the Gaalakuma matchup. Now that Let's Go Crazy can't jump in for free, he's starting to go for the alternative options to pass through yeah. the booms. It is a hard read, but uh, if you can make it, it's worth it. Okay, Let's Go Crazy activates. Oh! Just shimmies back and forth, just finally That's decides to go for the throw. Picks up those air fireballs. It's gonna be huge damage here. What's Perf gonna right. do? Is the Wait, EX flash kick on the way to come? No, he gets oh. crush countered. I don't know what he was trying to do, but it was not an EX flash kick. He might I have even accidentally got a normal flash kick. Perf, though, he cannot be taken off his zoning game. He needs to know how strong this game has been so far in this set. If you let Crazy take him off his zoning game, he's gonna get run over like he did that first time. All right, two um, good connections to the flash kicks. This is gonna discourage. Let's go crazy. He's continuing to jump in. He's gotten a lot more damage off of those jump ins than he should be. See, these just because it is the Akuma matchup, man, he's getting a lot of mileage now. But um, oh, oh, excellent read on the Sonic Hurricane. This is gonna do tons of damage. He actually could have dashed forward twice and uh, comboed out of it, but uh, it's a little bit too late there. Yes, perf. Connected with five flash kicks that's round that round. That's what I like to see. <laughs> <laughs> nice stat. <laughs> <laughs> So, Crazy sitting on a full bar of meter, but that meter is unfortunately jump in. Kind of, As I was saying, when you get to round three with full bar, it kind of is like locked in, so you can't use it unless you're going to use the critical one, so you don't want to waste your shot. Um, Perf looks like he's scenario. absolutely gotten the download on this matchup. He's just charging down back, ready yes. for those jump as soon as they come, and he knows the correct answer to take now. He's playing Guile the way that Guile should be played now. Cross counter sweep coming out of Let's Go Crazy. Goes to the 50 50 oh, afterwards. What a nice cross up setup. We're going to use the bar now. We're gonna... One it's going to be up. huge damage. But don't count Perf out yet. He's got the meter advantage. Oh, oh no! The panic flash kick. You've got to just block. Let Crazy corner himself. You don't have to take those risks. Akuma wins. 
that can be a bit of a tricky situation for god players to understand it's like oh he's in the air i should anti it right no it's a meaty cross up you have to you have to respect those uh -huh. All right, let's go crazy going into the final oh, game here. Perf needs to, he's really tightening up his play, but unfortunately he is at a two game deficit here. He just he just has this way of, so he will he will play the round totally solid, but then at the end, Crazy's like, well, I gotta make something happen. And he gets overly aggressive and Perf breaks down. Um, and so just needing to hold that defense through even once the, the aggression starts to happen. Um, because it wants, you know, if you let a Koopa get on top of you, he hits like a truck. Yeah, perfect. To, oh no, he's a little bit too twitchy with that somersault. Not sure what he was looking for. He just manages to let it rock. He's punished huge, big time for it. Oh! Drops the, count, uh, the combo there. Nice flash kick. There we go. Patiently blocks that forward heavy punch. A little too patient Man, by Perf, unfortunately. Yeah. That is a tricky situation to deal with. Even once you block it, he is still uh, Kume is still plus one, and this is going to be set point here for Let's Go Crazy. Perf needs to figure something out here, but he is sitting at a huge meter disadvantage. Yeah, Perf should feel really liberal to use the bar here because he will build it back throughout the round. So he's either going to win or he'll be in a fine position for for game three. Oh no, Perf walks back at the exact worst moment possible, loses the charge for the flash kick. There's the meaty cross up again. It's doing. A lot of work on Perf this game. Wow, Whoa, the crazy. parry on the, uh, the Sonic Boom. Oh, that's that's going to be the stun. That's going to be the He's kill. Goes for the, for the Raging Demon just for the swag factor. That'll do it. It will. And that's going to be the loser's finals point for Let's Go Crazy. Putting on a hell of a show. Perf 13 had the, the correct adaptations, Whoa. but unfortunately, he was just it was just... Uh, it just wasn't enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's he he tightened up a lot in the neutral, but then eventually, Crazy is like, well, I'm just gonna go in then. Like, Can I you... have to make something happen. He get overly aggressive, and Perf would get, um, you know, Perf would eventually get opened up. His defense would break down. He'd crack. And you know, uh, hats because... off to Let's Go Crazy for taking advantage of every small mistake that uh, that Perf would make to the fullest of his uh, of his ability. He'd pick up on every last uh, frame trap with a counter hit combo, and he would just not leave any damage on the table whenever uh, -huh. uh mm -hmm. whenever perf would just like smash jab during a frame trap just those little uh -huh. innocuous mistakes uh -huh. yeah very much so and he was he was very consistent and it's funny because i say these two opposing words but he was very consistent at keeping variety um mm -hmm. in his game so he was not a it's a frame trap every time it's the demon flip is the same you know ending to the demon flip with the the palm or the grab or the, the dive kick it's not tick throw, it's not shimmy, it's not like meaty throw. He's He's got a really solid variety in his um, offensive arsenal. And he continued that throughout the entire set, no matter what. Even when he was going aggressive, he kept the variety. Because a lot of people, when they start just going, uh, I gotta make it happen, I'm going in, and they go aggressive, they, there's no variety. It's just jump with two buttons, jump with two buttons, jump with two buttons. And that's a lot easier to get out of. All right, we're going to have our grand finals match between Let's Go Crazy and Euthanasia. For those who are uh, not aware of how a double elimination bracket works, because of the fact that Let's Go Crazy is working his way up from the lower bracket, he has to win not one, but two first to three sets. And Euthanasia only needs one, of course. Exactly. Both these guys did an amazing job to get here. I believe neither one of these players has won an underdog tournament in the past. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's the case. So, awesome. Uh, New champ. I like it. Yeah, we're gonna have some fresh blood raining, taking the crown. And both these guys absolutely deserve it. Let's go crazy. has been improving still slowly and steadily over the, the course of the uh, the underdog seasons. So Euthanasia, of course, making this Vega work, tightening up his blade. Solid opening combo. Let's go crazy. A little late on the anti here. You saw the animation start, and it cost him almost a quarter of his health. Again, there's the counter hit confirms out of Let's Go Crazy. He knows how to pick those up for good damage. And then the, the shimmy! shimmy. All the point like sweep. sweeping, why? Yeah, and then Euthanasia counter sweeping, but he could just get so much more damage for those. Akuma's sweep has less range than uh, some of his other buttons. It's just, it's pitiful, and you have to punish those. It's like minus 17. Oh, the demon flipped my games! Oh no, man, just to catch Euthanasia with the gimmicks. They're not difficult to deal with either. <laughs> you just have to, you just have to like patiently crouch block and then stand at the last second. 
And once you get the read on the, on the options there for uh, for Akuma, it stops being so much of a, uh, of a mind game. Uh -huh. Especially with that uh, Demon Flip Palm, it is technically an overhead, but it's very easy to actually whip crouching opponents with it if you do it too uh, late. Uh -huh. Ooh, the slide. Demon Flip into Swat Slide, and then he whips the grab. Euthanasia capitalizes, gets a throw into the corner, but nope. Oh, let's go crazy, puts an end to that with a DP. I do, I think Claw off in this match actually might be better. Oh, yes! I love this mid-screen thing when it's not happening to me. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Claw off in this, uh, in this matchup. It gives you the sorts of frame traps that you need to, to blow up Akuma, because he does have that three-frame jab, and if you don't use any real frame traps, uh -huh. you're going to pay for it. You finish you're getting caught by the cross-up setup off the activation there, and that closes out game Akuma one for Crazy. Win. Yeah, that looked pretty convincing there for Crazy, actually. Let's see if Euthanasia can figure anything out. It is, um, I mean, it, they all, commentators always say it's especially James Chen, uh, but, you know, whenever there's a run back, whoever lost the first set, there's a lot of times where they win, this, they win the run back, because they were thinking about how and why they lost, whereas when you win, you just move on. Absolutely, you win, you learn way more from a loss than you do from a victory. Which is part of why these tournaments are so effective in improving, because, <laughs> by definition, only one of these people can go through without losing. <laughs> Even then, sometimes it's not the case. Yeah. As we might see with Let's Go Crazy today. A reset, yep. Oh, the meaty is off. Okay. Can't keep him in the corner, though. Yeah, jump out of the corner so. there for Euthanasia. A little bit cheeky there. Let's go crazy. He's not ready for it. Good, Good read. Block on the EXDP and then gets the optimal punish as well. Damn. Very nice. I, I do love Colossal, like, stance switch combos. They're so sexy. They are, and then perfect, uh, perfect awareness by Euthanasia closes it out with the overhead. That's three rounds you started with jumping, so I appreciate Crick making the adjustment there. Let's go crazy. He has all the correct answers there. The back heavy punch anti air into the Oki. Oh, nothing working. Let's shooting. see. Get the stun. Yep. And this is going to... Oh, no, he drops the combo. He could have... If he had connected that combo, he would have built the CA. He would have been able to kill. That's tragic. Both oh. players got... Both players got really antsy when that stun bar was high. It totally didn't work out in Euthanasia's favor, but... Uh, there was, there was, you could see some immediate, um, just tension and like, uh, uh, up in tempo. It's a scary situation uh, for both players, actually. You want it, you want that stun really bad. You don't want to let your opponent escape through your fingers. And as the defending player, you just, you need to figure don't something want to out. Get stunned, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Cross see how you think it works. Like keeping him in the corner. Okay. Let's go crazy. Going a little bit too crazy with the standing medium punch button. <laughs> So, Euthanasia, it looks like while while his his neutral is great, he actually does better in the midstream than he actually does when he has his opponent cornered. Um, I haven't seen him have really strong uh, kind of de like offensive sequences or setups on Crazy. Oh man, catch him with the, the cross up again. On Crazy when he's had him cornered, he's just kind of worked his way out very quickly, very easily. He doesn't get. Um, Absolutely, and that's a that's, that's Vega's strong suit when he has his claw off is his crazy uh, walk speed and his frame traps and his ability to counter hit confirm his opponent if they, if he catches them pressing any kind of buttons. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's something you have to take advantage of when you've got your opponent cornered. Vega can be uh -huh. terrifying in those kinds of situations. Because uh -huh. yeah, he's pushed him to the corner but then got nothing Round for him one. multiple times. Fight. Oh no, Euthanasia trying tier, to jump right in. It's not gonna work against this guy. Akuma's got some amazing anti airs, and Vega doesn't have enough airborne options to work his way around them. Oh, let's go crazy trying to go for a tick shammy. Luthanasia doesn't take the bait, but he's still cornered. Point blank fireball is good. Oh, Ooh, nice. huge Instant punish jump. here for Euthanasia. Gets his way out of the corner and gets a hefty chunk of damage for it as well. Oh, the back dash is out of let's go crazy. Gets himself out of that situation. Yep, just, just does it. Euthanasia, wow! Wow, I love the cross-cut DP. Manages to catch he, Euthanasia. He's missed it like six times, but he's still going for it. You know, you can affect that. Uh, SPD is nice. What do we That's got? So crazy, has enough critical to chip out. <laughs> he doesn't try for it. I, did, I had no idea what was going to happen on that exchange. That but, um... Euthanasia is really not getting enough value out of it. He's just kind of using it on guesses, and then he confirms it and hits. 
but he needs to be getting much more value out of that. Oh, the air throw is another great option for Vega that's underutilized, especially in this matchup. If you can air throw a combo before he can throw a fireball, all of a sudden you can shut down a lot more of his, uh, his jump options than normal. Another crush counter sweep. We've been seeing so many of them. Okay, man. Not, not paying attention to when uh, Crazy has the bar and the V trigger to make DP a, um, you know, a little bit more of a viable wake up option because that's when he's most likely to do it. But there he goes. He's getting caught again trying to DP the Barcelona dive. I think he was in Asia, thought that he had the claw on. He goes to that Dodge Fear. It's not a great button to claw off. And there's going to be one on the board for you, Asia. Don't count him out yet. Yeah, we saw some some big adaptations there out of euthanasia it looked like he was getting bullied a lot less in the air but he was still and he's, he stopped resorting to the jump ins as much he started to, to play a little bit more of a solid grounded game round one fight oh there we go nice. jumps in oh, yet again he's gonna keep bashing his head against that wall and let's go crazy he's gonna keep taking damage for it <laughs> i'm not sure what he's trying to accomplish with these neutral jumps I'm not sure what I was gonna say, I'm not sure what he's looking for. Okay, good challenge there by Euthanasia. That's actually it's a really risky situation to challenge in, but it works out Very for him. But that ATR was excellent. Oh no punish there for Let's Go Crazy on that, that way too uncomfortable close forward roundhouse and forward, forward fierce. Oh, I like the wall jump there to get out of the corner. Very clever. It was a good time because he had to come down with the air fireball, a lot of recovery, so it was a pretty safe time to do it. Reversal. Oh, nice block. Oh, not sure. <laughs> Let's go crazy. He's trying to parry there. <laughs> Let's go crazy. He was trying to go for one of his patented moves. But excellent by Euthanasia to use the bar and close the ramp. Wow, immediately spends it on the flying Barstone attack, and it works wonders. Not sure why Let's go crazy took the skies. I'm sorry, he reset him. He reset him to close the ramp. He used the bar there. Oh, okay. Euthanasia trying to react to that fireball with a V skill. Unfortunately, just mistimed it a little bit. Nice dash up throw. Back throw goes for the. Oh, yep. So let's go crazy. So at this point, if I'm Euthanasia, I'm going to do it every single time. So I would be consistently Barcelona diving and purposely doing side switches just to mess with his inputs because mm -hmm. he struggled to hit it consistently. Let's go crazy. He's opting for those DPs to, to anti air that Barcelona attack, but that's not actually your best option. Back heavy punch works better. <laughs> Does work better, but he gets caught with the meaty, so the shimmy to the activation with the meaty is gonna close out this round. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go crazy. Good at capitalizing on every little mistake his opponent makes. This is reset point, actually. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely right, it is. Air to Goes air, for the cross under, that's gonna be huge damage, but he drops it. He's nice going for a V-Trigger combo there by accident. Oh man, Euthanasia, so he had the right option. He just was a little bit unsure of the, the punish timing because he could have gotten a much better punish on the landing there. These sweets coming out of Euthanasia. They're all doing, they're working, but oh man, the risks. Nice, I like that V-Reversal. Yep, can't catch him. Good, take your damage. Oh, Don't just do critical it. Art. I'm not sure why you would ever do this, actually. <laughs> It's not gonna kill, and if you want to wake up with something invincible, you have EXDP. Let's go crazy, kind of throws away his bar unnecessarily there, but it works. Gonna cross under again. Nice tech, though. Both players really calmed around. it down here. Yeah. Oh, here comes the flying Barcelona attack. It works. Oh, no, the wake up light DP? Sure, okay. This is gonna be a huge punish for euthanasia. Oh, he misses the walk forward to confirm it. But the cross up is good, and that's a reset. Again, I don't think euthanasia is very comfortable without having his claw on. You see him going for that crouch heavy punch, and it just missed timing it because, uh. Oh, in situations where I think it would have worked with the claw on. Let's go crazy man just to get the bracket reset and here we go. I don't think I don't think Crouch Heavy Punch can actually anti your cross up. I think um Euthanasia is just struggling to I'm talking to about a meaty should... situation. He's trying to go oh, for oh, meaty crouch heavy meaty. punch, which yeah. is a that's the claw on option. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um he's definitely struggling to visually confirm when it's gonna be a cross up. Uh because he's getting opened up a lot by those. Mm -hmm. Alright, here we go. We've got our grand grand finals here. <laughs> With our bracket reset in tow, is Let's Go Crazy going to be able to take this from the lower bracket, or is Euthanasia going to be able to prevail as our Street Fighter Underdog Tournament 3 champion? 
<laughs> let the Diamond Nash play. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's just, let's just put you in as the final boss. Yeah, I got Yeah, there you go. Yeah, winner plays <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> Reset though, what a great way to end it. Because these two have had, had two really excellent sets. So the third set, I mean, let's go. I think that Round just one. basically, uh, Let's Go Crazy needs to figure out how to deal with that uh, flying Barcelona attack. He's trying to bash yeah, his head against the wall with the same DP option over and over again, and it's not going to keep is, working. And, and I wish Euthanasia would realize how effective that is and just abuse it more. You know, yeah. like, I, I just. I, Whenever I've learned that someone doesn't know how to deal with something, it's on. You know what I mean? Like, until you figure it out in the middle of the match, I'm not going to stop. Absolutely. Um, giving you what you don't know how to deal with. And don't don't feel bad for doing that. That's not because make you a bad player. It just makes you smart. Let's go crazy matches to work his way out of a difficult situation when he was close to the stun with an EXDP. Takes a risk to get out of it and it absolutely pays off. Round one goes to Let's Go Crazy. Uh, yeah, very dominant round, but uh, again, yeah, we've seen well, these back and forth. They both have had good rounds against Point. each other, so I don't think we'll be true side of anything just yet. Whoa. <laughs> Interesting little whip punish there by Euthanasia. The, oh, oh the parry! Is. This guy's just being cheeky for the sake of showing off. <laughs> well, we've seen Let's Go Crazy throw that parry out many a time. Yep. So it's not, it's not like it's outside of the realm of, of Let's Go's uh, actual game. The slide. Close counter sweep. Euthanasia has been getting so many of those. The success rate is just mind-boggling. Activate, dash up. No, misses oh, it. Oh no, he mistimes that. Uh, Excellent that slide up. under. And the read on the DP. Great bait. This is gonna kill. Maybe? No, it doesn't quite. He could have spent a little bit of bar to make a kill, but he just did not for it. Didn't realize maybe that he needed to. Oh no. The claw comes off, and this is where Euthanasia sort of breaks down. Overhead, oh we, man. I okay, thought, he goes to the overhead and manages to pull it I thought it was up. about to be trouble. I thought Crazy was just gonna go, and just mm -hmm. go, 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 and Euthanasia was gonna be in a bad spot. We've seen but, that time um, and time again. Whenever Euthanasia loses the claw, he sort of breaks down. He's not really sure how to take advantage of his normals in that, situ uh, in that stance. And yeah, he definitely, when, if you have a character like this, you need to learn to be comfortable with both stances, for sure. Which it kind of sucks, you gotta learn two things, but it's it's too beneficial. Oh, he goes for the claw switch. Nice! Excellent meeting pressure. with the confirm. Wow, he just goes All into it. He just goes from Crouch uh, Fierce immediately into EX Flying Barrel Slow Attack and makes it work. This is going to be big damage here, and he's going to get the kill. Done. There we go. Reset game one goes to Euthanasia. So, I mean, again, like I said, that first round was a bit of a steamroll, but that's happened so much in this set that I don't think it was really a sign of it. Absolutely not. This has all come down to this whole game right now. Like, uh, that just came down to, to whether or not Euthanasia could block... Uh, uh, let's go crazy's DPs. That's literally how every round went down. Round one, he got he ate the BXDP and, got, and let's go crazy. Got to come back for it. And then rounds two and three, he blocked them and then managed to get the punishes. Oh yes, a huge damage. Unfortunate to not spend the bar in that that second round and close it out, but it worked out. Anyways. Yeah, I honestly feel like let's go crazy should stop looking at it as an option as much. The fact that euthanasia is baiting them means that they've already done served their purpose. <laughs> Excellent shimmy. Let's go crazy. He's probably nailed a good six to eight shimmies on Working on a stun. Already. Oh, he almost got the punish on the, the chase down after that, uh, the V reversal, but it is invisible for a, a comfortable amount of time. Wow, the goes with the cross under after the neutral jump. Oh, no, unfortunately, he just drops the, the, the combo opportunity there. Okay, jump back. V trigger fireball. Let's go crazy. Oh, being a little I bit think, too crazy. So he, 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 he basically just kicked the fireball, but I'm very confident that was supposed to be V-Trigger and he just missed the second button I when see. he kicked that fireball. That was a very hectic round. <laughs> Goes to Let's Go Crazy. Man, that slide. Kind of sweet. It's, it's hit a lot on Let's Go Crazy trying to throw a fireball. So it's always like the same thing is happening to when the slide hits. So one Let's of them- Let's Go Crazy has to keep an eye out for it. Whoa, the fireball stuff wow. with the EX Barcelona. I did not expect that to happen. Here we go. Let's go crazy going to confirm the critical art. Not quite get the kill. Bring it down to one mix up now, which yep. is totally worth it. Totally worth it. Euthanasia yep. no longer has the claw. Goes for the command grab, but what's he going to do now is the nice. question. Oh, oh, wow. Let's go crazy. Just walks back a little bit, lets that roll whiff, and then punishes it beautifully, bringing it up one to one here in oh, reset wins. grand finals. Yep. I mean, Euthanasia needed to go a little bit. A little Crazy. Let's go crazy. Obviously, he's like, no, dude, that's my game. Come on, it's in the name. <laughs> so he was, he was, he was ready. He didn't fall for it. Um, I love that Let's go crazy. Recognize that uh, that euthanasia didn't get any proper Oki off that situation. He just walked back. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I think honestly he actually might have been. I, I couldn't see if he walked back or if he dashed. I thought he dashed because he was expecting um, oh, okay. like another command grab. Oh, he's an Asian jumping in. Here. That's crazy. Getting the answer here, but not canceling it. Could have got a lot more for that, but. Ooh. Almost connects that forward heavy punch. Excellent corner Working pressure on from. Stun. Oh, oh but he no, wasn't why stun? the sweep oh, and why no. the lack of a punish just claws to uh, switch is in the middle of that, that the block sweep. Throws yeah. away his opportunity. Let's, let's go crazy let's, doing. Let's go crazy was stun hunting a little bit too hard and he almost he almost had the tides turn, but he got left euthanasia and punch. It's weird that let's go crazy keeps on going for those sweeps, but we haven't seen a single overhead out of him. It's true. Kuma does have a kind of a slow dopey one, but still it works. Yeah, absolutely, especially for those kind of situations, exactly. I like, I like that wall dive, and use of the bar to put him on one stun mix up. Let's go crazy, he's not phased by a stun bar. He should be probably, but he has DPs to try and get himself out of that situation. Oh, the neutral jump, same side. I like it, multiple Asian looks on blocks the same out of mix up. Asia, but he manages to succumb to the jump in, finally. See, he's oh, able to perfectly capitalize on that jump in. Oh my gosh, you think uh, Crazy's yep, just going. Get out of that situation. Nice. And the overhead. Very the nice. Overhead. Way to close the round. That was some solid play. Yeah, that was very collected out of euthanasia. A very difficult situation to defend in, and he managed to do it beautifully. Okay, respect. He knows he's trying to DP it. Looking to see if he can bait one out. Oh no, he goes for the standing roundhouse anti air, and it's not going to work. This is those fireballs. Nice slide under to avoid the demon flip. Now he's got him in the corner. That's a great option. Let's go to work. Um, okay, we're just gonna do the X-Slam. <laughs> Save sure. him, let's get him. <laughs> Alright, Yosko Crazy confirms into his critical luck. He wants that damage, and now he has the life lead. Which, that's fine not having the bar, because you're most likely gonna build the close out that. So go ahead and put yourself into the situation to close out. No! Matter of fact, just like that, Let's Go Crazy has the activation, Freeze but he's, the not too, he's not close enough to capitalize. He based the DP, Euthanasia managed to close it out with a simple punish. I'm not sure why. Let's Go Crazy broke down <laughs> right after he missed time that confirm. Mm -hmm. All right, he didn't miss time, did he? just missed space, did he? should have recognized that that wasn't going to reach in that range. Yeah, it was not the Tatsu confirmed. That was the, that was the, uh, the micro step medium kick confirmed. But that was excellent. Euthanasia with another bait on the DP puts himself on tournament game. Round one. All right, yeah, Flight. Euthanasia is here on tournament game. It's so crazy. Don't count him out. He's still he has reached out the bracket once. Oh, All he needs to do is absolutely. not DP as much, and this won't be a problem for him. <laughs> this is a hundred percent not over. I don't think any player at any point has been like defeated. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, so this has, been a, this has been a very excellent final set. And it looks like the entirety of the adaptation out of Euthanasia has come in the form of baiting. Let's go crazy's DPs, I'm not gonna lie. Really That's pretty it's much been, where all the momentum swings have come what? from. What? Opening round by Euthanasia, he won this tournament, but he drops the combo, it's fine. It's fine, we're good guys. It's fine, picks it right back up, it's fine. American no, reset, American reset, we're good. Five second roll, it's good, we're good, we're okay. Yeah, five second roll, picked it up. <laughs> Looking for the fireball, Reed. He has opened with many fireballs, so I, I don't hate that. I like that neutral jump right now that uh, Euthanasia has been going forward to react to those air fireballs. That is a very solid what option. What a read on the fireball and the reset! The mini no, slide, though, is just not. Line. It's not even an option. It's not like there's a thing he can do with that. To be fair though, Let's Go Crazy has not been punishing those optimally at all. And it's so, true. you know, it is still an option. It's going to continue to be an option until Let's Go Crazy punishes them. Alright, perk backing off a little bit, yep. The neutral jump is such a great adaptation over over the uh, the air fireballs. That is one thing that people will tell you to do. And touch and buttons. Excellent. That's gonna Final be game. the tournament for Euthanasia. <laughs> Just immediately manages to make the right adaptations, blocks the oh, DPs, yeah. neutral jumps yeah. the fireballs, and that's all it takes to, to overcome Let's Go Crazy's a little bit too crazy Akuma play. Very yeah, good stuff. That, that third round was the most was like the most in control that euthanasia's looked in in this set between uh him and and let's go crazy he really just he knew all the right things at the right times um and he knew that he was he was button happy he was touching buttons and he caught him doing it a lot oh let's see how did that first set go was that that wasn't three oh was it no it was two three it was two three three okay and then it was three one Yeah, let's go crazy. Took the first set, got the reset, 3-2, and then Euthanasia manages to bring it back and become our Grand Finals champion with a 3-1 victory 
over let's go crazy good stuff to both of our contestants that's both of them are going to be very high up on the leaderboards after their uh after this tournament result good stuff to everybody who participated good stuff to everybody who didn't go own to and everybody who did go own to better luck next time maybe uh try to figure out exactly what you lost to consult the coaches in the coaching channel and we'll be more than happy to help you out find out what tools you can acquire to make it further on in this underdog tournament but uh yeah my name has been mount lover thank you for joining me fred yeah absolutely it's been a pleasure uh enjoyed being here and All right. uh and let me give a quick shout out to uh to andrew jeremy for the uh the subscription that happened uh, during that last match there thank you for subscribing you now have i think you should have access to uh the new challenger tv um i think it's what new chanzuki is, is our emote at least uh, if it's passed through yeah. the uh new chanzuki yep yeah, so enjoy that. <laughs> You're going to be able to take that to other people's Twitch channels now and annoy them with it. So <laughs> have fun. But yeah, thank you everybody for joining us. My name has been Mount Lover. This has been the third underdog tournament. Tune in next week, same time for the next uh, tournament. The bracket's already up in the NCH Schedules channel in the Discord. If you want to know how to join the Discord yourself, you can just go ahead and hit exclamation point Discord in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. See you later.